Good morning and welcome to Sewing Street on this lovely Monday morning. Actually, it's, it's quite a nice morning. A little bit windy, but at least it wasn't raining. It was quite a nice drive up the motorway. And then the sun rose. So hopefully this is the beginning of a lovely week because the weekend was shocking. Anyway, so we've got loads and loads of really nice things on to show you today. Lots. We've got two guests. We've got Yarn Lane, we've got lots of tools, lots of fabrics. I'm quite excited by this hour because they let me choose. They said, right, Rebecca, you can choose what goes in this hour. And, oh, that's fantastic. So it's like my sewing room. All I did is I got my sewing room, all the things that I really need and I really like, and I bought them here. It's wonderful. So that's coming up in a minute. But first, we've got the early bird. Really pl excited and pleased about this one. It's Poly Down Premium Polyester Wadding. Now, what's great about this is that there are different qualities of polyester wadding. Wedding wadding. There are different qualities of polyester wadding, and this is a really good quality one. Um, it's a really big piece as well. It's king size, so 120 by 120 inches, or just over three meters. So that's a really big piece. I'm going to take it out. I might never get it back in again, but it's the only way that you're going to see it. Now the beauty of polyester wadding is various but one of them is it dries really easily so say you were going to use it for quilts that you wanted to wash a lot or maybe a picnic blanket or something that you're going to use outdoors it's great for that because it does dry really quickly it's hypoallergenic so if you've got anyone who has any issues with dust and um or allergies to things it's really lovely it's quite a thick one it's got quite a high loft so if you're using it for wall hangings particularly when you're quilting you get a really nice 3d look to it so you see i'm not going to unroll the whole piece so i'll never get better in but it is 120 inches like three meters square it's a really useful wadding to have if you like to put waddings in cushions bags table mats all that sort of thing you can use it for just one quilt and it's a lovely big size for that but if you need to always keep a stash of wadding because you want to add a bit i mean even if you're just making a little zip purse or a makeup bag or a wash bag it's always useful to put wadding in that because it just cushions it, it protects it, and it looks better. It also um, quilts really well. So if you want to make a big quilt, and you want to just do a little bit of quilting on it, it will give you a nice loft. But if you were doing something smaller, like a cushion or a wash bag, and you want to put lots and lots of quilting, it will just give it that a bit more structure and softness. So it's a really useful thing to have in your stash that you've always got. So I'll, it just adds a little bit extra. I always find if you do it, just a little bit of patchwork for something really small by putting wadding between that and the backing fabric or the lining it just gives it a bit more structure and looks a bit more professional so it's great if you want to buy it for a full-size quilt but also to add to your stash anyway today we've got it for 26.99 which is a three pound three pound saving so actually 26.99 and it's a massive piece but, 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 before you check out, we've got a special offer on for you today. So we are celebrating the fact that we have now got 10,000, woo, 10,000 of you following us on our Sewing Street Facebook fan page. So to celebrate that, we're giving you £10 off when you spend £50 or more, but you have to do it in one checkout if that makes sense so you can have lots and lots of different items it doesn't have to be just on one item but you know the way that it works with sewing street is that you can check you we have one postage charge of 3.95 and you can check out as many times as you want you will still get charged of 3.95 but with this offer the 10 pounds on the, when you spend 50 pound more you have to check out once with that obviously you can continue checking out throughout the day but just make sure that you get 50 pounds worth of products in your basket or more then you get the 10 pound off but that's not all we've also got another special offer where you get 20 pounds off if you spend 80 pounds or more and remember it's again Put it in your basket, wait until you've reached the 50 or the 80 pounds and then check out and then you will get the discount. Obviously, after that, you can check out as many times as you want to still only have one PMP, but it's just the fiddly way that this offer works. I don't know why, something to do with the system, but you have to check out in one go. Does that make sense? Now, we purposely got loads, I'm not going to put that away, am I? We purposely got, I'll just lean on it. 
Yes, I'm not going to. Shall I open it out fully? Look at this. So, well, because of this often, because we have to have this strange system where you have to check it out and go, we purposely got lots of this early bird. So don't worry that you're not going to lose it because we have got quite a lot of it. Put it in your basket, wait until you hit the 50 or the 80 pounds and then check out and then you'll get your discount. But look at this. Look, it's still going. Look at that. Look at that. That's loads. But that's not all of it because obviously it all I'm not going really not going to open it all up. Okay then. I might have to move my glasses. Can't see. So that's the length of it. Look, 208 inches which is look at I know 120 inches which is 3 meters in length. But it's square. So the length of this funnily enough is the same as the width of it. Honestly, it's going to take me ages to open it all up. When you do, if you're using this for a whole quilt, if you're just using a little piece, just um, cut it off. But if you're using it for a whole quilt, open the whole thing up like I'm doing here and leave it for a bit, just a few hours. Because it's been super compressed and rolled up inside its packaging, um, a bit like, you know, when you buy um, pillows or a duvet or a mattress, or something, you need to leave it open and then it will, the air will fill it and it's much easier because if you look at it, you can see the sort of the lines and the creases in it. If you leave it flat and open, just on a table somewhere for a couple of hours, then it, the air will get back into it and it will flatten out. So I could keep going. Do you know what, this would be great if you were doing a Christmas display, wouldn't it? And you want to, you know, put it on your notice board, any teachers watching, you're supposed to be in school. So we've got a question from Sandra. Does, does the offer of £10 off work with things on the website? Yes, it does. It works with anything that's on today's show, anything on the website, anything from Sewing Street, across the whole board. So make sure you get to your 50 or your eight, 50 pounds for £10 off. 80 pounds and you get 20 pounds off and it does so you know if you wanted to create a backdrop you want to decorate your home this is brilliant for snow isn't it and at 26.99 that's really good value but it is massive isn't it i could keep unfolding this all day i'm still going look there's look it's, i'm still i'm still going we are never getting this back in but um producer hannah says i can do it i think maybe she yet yeah, because you know what it's like. You you see it all rolled up, but now you can see it. Oh, it's really difficult to unfold. But you think, you know, if you wanted to use it for a, a quilt, obviously you know that it will fit that. But once you see it all open like this, you can think, God, how many bags can I wad? Clothing, really good for clothing because it's machine washable. So if you were making a quilted jacket or you want to add a little bit of structure to something, you know, it's often, I just haven't finally done it, it's often even if you're using a really lightweight fabric to make an item of clothing, you want to give it a little bit of padding. There we go. I've looked, done it now. Look. It's massive. It's massive for $26.99. But don't worry, we have lots of it. So put it in your basket, wait till you hit your 50 or your 80 pound mark, then check out. But, and after that, you can keep checking out, you'll still get your 3.95 postage. But there's only one thing that you have to remember. If you're buying anything on split pay, which is a single item that's 149 or more, that doesn't work with this offer. It sort of makes it invalid. So don't mix two offers. You will just, you have to choose. You can either use split pay or the offer, but not both. So there we go, that's it. So should we have a look at what's coming up today? Right, so we have um, at eight o'clock, my so it says sewing room tools, but it's actually my sewing room tools. Rebecca's sewing room tools has been brought here. Uh, nine o'clock, we've got Sally Ann Harrison coming in and we've got a lovely book called Sizzle Quilt, which is all about foundation paper piecing. I used to really be scared of this and then I worked out how to do it and I absolutely love foundation paper piecing. And Sally Ann, if you've not done it before, she's going to show you how to do foundation paper piecing with this book and how to make... Um, a cushion cover or even a full quilt. It's beautiful. The um, 
if you're interested in buying the book, it is a beautiful book and very, very comprehensive. If you've never tried foundation paper piecing, you're going to love this and it's on pre-order now. 10 o'clock, fabulous fabrics. We've got lots of new fabrics, particularly a lovely Riley Blake collection by Minky Kim, which is beautiful. That's at 10. Um, 11 o'clock, we've got Sally Ann coming back with creative grids, and she's going to show us how to use two different creative grid tools and what you can do with them in lots of different ways. So if you've never used creative grids but like to have a go, or if you have and you haven't seen these rulers, this is really good. It's a sit back, buy the products and watch. It's a real learning technical hour. Then at 12 o'clock, we've got Yarn Lane. Oh, woo, how exciting today. Today we are knitting. I'm really excited about this one. Um, the lady, Nicola from Twink Knits, who's coming in, she hand dyes her own yarn and hangs it all on the washing line. It's fascinating. I've seen all the pictures. And she's got three different kits, going to show you how to knit a shawl. And then she's also got some of her own hand dyed yarn as well that you can buy just on its own. So that's going to be a brilliant hour full of knitting today. Um, but anyway, let's start with sewing room tools. Now they said to me, what would you like to show on air today? I went, where shall I start? So there's so many, many things that I have in my sewing room, whether they're essential tools or supplies. And I always, particularly with the supplies, always keep a stock of them because I use them all the time. And there are certain tools, some tools have come and then gone because they're rubbish or I don't know what to do with them and they're useless. So I've actually only chosen all the tools that I use all the time. Now I do lots of rotary cutting, um, be not just because I do patchwork, but I, I probably do more home sewing than patchwork, to be honest. I make a lot of bags and cushions and zip purses and that sort of thing. And I would not be without my cutting mat and rulers and rotary cutters. So the first one is this cutting mat. Look at the size of it. You need a big, this is the biggest one that, there is a bigger one I think possibly you can buy somewhere, but this is the pretty much the standard biggest one. And I use this, this lives on my table all the time because it's brilliant. So when you want to, um, you want to just cut a strip of bias binding because even if you're a dressmaker, you need to bind a neckline, you need a straight edge. If you're making uh, a cushion and you've got to cu cut a 16 inch square, it's so much easier to do with a rotary cutter and a ruler. So I always have a mat that this size. And then I have two different rulers. I know there are hundreds and hundreds of different rulers and some people have loads and loads, I've got two. I have this really big one. This ruler is, if you buy the wadding and this ruler, then you're only 50 pounds already, just saying. So this ruler is really good and the mat because if you want to cut fabric and you want to cut strips from fabric, normal quilting fabric comes in a um, 44 inch width, 112 centimetres. If you fold it in half, because it nearly always comes folded in half on the bolt anyway, that will fit across your table. This ruler will fit across it. So if you want to cut, say, one inch strips um, from your fabric, you can do that really well with this. So for example, here's one here. Now, most fabric on a bolt will come folded in half. So what I do is I just give it a quick press to make sure that the top crease is there. Now, look, that fits really nicely on there. And then you can put your ruler on it. And then if you wanted to cut one inch strips, that's very easy to do because it fits really well. What I do is I, get, I press it and I put the top crease along one of the lines and line that up. Now, if you then smooth it out with your hands. If the top crease is along there, now if you, I've got to put my glass on, I can't see. Oh, magic. Um, if you now ro line up your rotary, your ruler with the edge of here, I sort of line it up so I'm cutting off the minimum. You can line it up at the top and the bottom on the lines on the mat. If you trim along there, that's a nice straight edge. You can then use that to cut further strips. So what I like about the creative grid ones is that there's um, like a textured dots. It's probably a posh name for that, but they're like textured all the way around the edge and dots on there. And the reason they're there is it gives it grip so that when you're cutting across a half width of fabric like this, it won't move because it holds it still. All the measurements are printed on here. It's also got angles. The 45 degree angle is brilliant when you're trimming down um, flying geese or half square triangles. It's perfect for that. And it's got all the inch measurements going both ways. So that's brilliant. Um, Hannah's got a question as well. 
Um, so often she's asked, why have I got an eight and a half inch ruler? There's no difference except the eight and a half inch is wider. It just gives you more. So say you've got to cut six, you know, six and a half inch strips. You can with this because the one that I used to have was only six inches wide. And if I want to cut anything more than six, I have to then measure and mark. But this just gives you that extra allowance. And quite a lot of quilts and quilt blocks are done in sort of an eight inch square. So that's really nice because you've got that extra half inch as well. Um, rotary cutter. Oh, the other ruler I like why we're talking about rulers is this one which is just a six inch square really like this ruler because sometimes and this is great this long ruler for cutting long strips but when you're cutting or trimming say your blocks like half square triangles a smaller one is easier you can obviously use a big one but if you've got to trim it that way then you've got to trim it that way there's a lot of movement but if you're just cutting and trimming so i like the big ruler for cutting strips but i like the smaller one for cutting blocks or just trimming edges or i use it a lot for foundation paper piecing because you can just um trim off the edges so there are loads and loads of rulers the more you've got the better but these are the two that i use all the time um it is a bit overwhelming when you don't know what to start with but i would say the very basic is buy a big cutting mat and a long ruler then there are then obviously in order to do it because you've got to have the whole package you can't really have one without the other you need a rotary cutter because that's what the ruler is used for it's cutting with the rotary cutter rotary cutters come in three different sizes 28 mil 45 mil and 60. 45 is the standard one it's the middle of the road one it does pretty much any everything the the 28 millimeter one is for small cutting the 40 the 60 for bigger but this is your normal one um it's got a retractable blade, which is great. So you just push it back in and out. It's a really affordable rotary cutter at $8.99. That's a great price. And this is the one that I use all the time because remember I got to choose, which was lucky. There's a question from Pauline about the early bird. Uh, would the padding be all right for an adjuster form? No, yes, absolutely fine. And in fact, I would say with an adjuster form, use something like a polyester wadding because it's got a bit more loft that you can, you don't need to use so many layers. So if you buy an adjuster form dress mannequin, we haven't got one, we haven't got one behind me, have we? And you, you have to pad it out so it's the same as your shape. Wadding is the best thing for that. And actually polyester wadding, it would is the best for that because it's a bit spongier so you can fill it out more so that would be perfect so those are the three well the four things that i would i have in my rotary cutting equipment and they're perfect so the next thing i would say is scissors can't really go without scissors can you now i have three pairs of scissors well i actually i have more than that these are my three best pairs of scissors so you have to have a pair of dressmaking shears because you need to be cut for cutting big pieces of, you need to be cutting the bigger pieces of fabric. Now, what I like about these, they're micro serrated, which means they've got tiny, tiny, not even teeth, but just tiny um, serrations on them. And they are very good for if, well, they're, they'll obviously, they're very sharp, so they'll cut cotton fabric beautifully. But what they're very good for is if you're cutting something slippery like um, a silk or a cotton lawn or a jersey or anything like that, the tiny, tiny serrations on them stop it slipping when you're cutting. So they're very multi-purpose. They're, they're very sharp for cotton fabrics or canvases or anything like that. But for the slippery or the stretchy fabrics, they're perfect. So I love my prim micro serrated scissors. Secondly, the um you always need a little pair of scissors oh they're over here small pair of scissors for just trimming ends and cutting ends i love these fiskers classic scissors in fact when we do yarn lane i always put these on yarn lane because they're just very sharp they've got very pointy ends they're perfect for i use them for obviously snipping threads and cutting threads cutting small buttonholes or slits because they've got very sharp points and I use them a lot for embroidery for cutting threads, but they're also very good for any of the yarn crafts because, you know, they're just a nice, small, sharp pair of scissors. And I really like Fiskars as well. They're good quality, like the orange handles. And then the third thing I have is pinking shears. Here's the packaging, and I've actually got some of these out. Use pinking shears all the time because I hate finishing seam allowances. Really hate it. It takes ages and ages and uses loads of thread. 
So when I'm doing dressmaking or anything where the seam allowance is raw, instead of doing all that finishing, and I'm, I haven't got an overlocker, so I just cut it with pinking shears. And if you cut the edge of the fabric with the pinking shears, it cuts across the grain of the fabric with the teeth and it stops the fabric from fraying. Also, if you have to grade a seam allowance, so when you have, you've got, maybe you're going round an armhole or if you're doing like a straight bodice with a gathered skirt and you need to remove some of the bulk, if you cut it with pinking shears, you're cutting out more fabric than if you just cut it with straight scissors because you're cutting zigzags out of it. So it's really good for reducing bulk. So these are a real must have. So of all the scissors, micro serrated, sharp, small sharp embroidery scissors and a pair of pinking shears. Um, well, where should we go to? I'm going to talk about my essential supplies now. I always have Bonder Web freezer paper and wadding because I do... Here's the Bonder Web. And I always buy, you can buy Bonder Web in small packets, but I end up using quite a lot, so I always buy it on a roll. We've had it out of stock for a while, but it is now back on. So it's 23.99 for a five meter roll. And remember the deal today, once you get up to your 50 pounds, you get the 10 pounds off. So it's worth putting something like this in your basket and then check out when you hit the 50 pounds or when you hit the 80 pounds, you'll get 20 pounds off with our special code, Facebook 10 or Facebook 20. So I do a lot of um, applique, but I also use it for free machine embroidery as well, because it's like, if you've not used Bonder Web, it's like double-sided sticky tape, but it's interfacing. So it's paper on one side, so you can trace the pattern. Remember to trace the in reverse if it's um, not symmetrical. You then press this onto some fabric. You cut round the shape and then you peel off the backing and it's sticky on the other side. So you can pop it over and turn and place it onto your fabric and you can stick it in place. And that's really useful if you're doing applique. I mean, I always sew it on as well because although it is pretty sturdy and it will stay there, it probably wouldn't last washing and stay forever. So then I work a machine zigzag or some embroidery around the edge. If I'm doing free motion embroidery and I want to put applique on there, it's really hard to keep the free motion still. I know a lot of people do, they just cut a shape, they pin it to their fabric and they sew round it, but I always find it moves. I do a lot of things, I often, if I make something for somebody, whether it's just like um, a blanket with their name on or a small purse or something, it's really nice to personalise. So all I do is I write their name, print it out, but in a sort of a big, bold, chunky font. Flip it over in reverse because you can normally see through it, but actually you, there is a setting on your printer and your computer where you can print it in mirror image. Then you can just cut it out. And what's lovely is you, if, you, um, if you iron it to a piece of fleece and cut it out, that doesn't fray. You can then iron that, press that. If you buy a blanket for somebody, like a cot blanket or a quilt or something, if you just put their name on and then you can sew around the edge. But it just looks amazing. It looks like you've hand drawn in fabric. So it's so it's just one of those things that i always have because i used to buy it in packets and i run out all the time but i love bonder web because you buy a gift for somebody you want to make them something just personalize it with a few letters or some motifs and it's perfect there's so many images i'm constantly google imaging in images that i can use to for applique or free machine embroidery, all of that sort of thing. But this is only just back in stock and it looks like it's about to sell out. So if you do want it, pop it in your basket, make sure you've hit your 50 pound and do check out then because it's just, this is one of my essential things. Um, my other essential thing is freezer paper. And again, I always buy it by the roll. Now, originally this was, this is used for freezing. Um, in America, they use it freezing. It's got wax. It's, a, it's not actually wax. I think it's a silicon. It's got a, it's a plastic coated, but it is a, a waxy type finish and then paper on one side. And what it does magically is you can press it onto fabric and it stays there temporarily. And then you can peel it off and it doesn't make any mark. So it's very good for foundation paper piecing where you need to take it off. It's also really good for, um, EPP, so English paper pieces, when you do hexagons, because you can cut all the hexagons out in here, press them onto your fabric. It's much easier then to turn the edges over and tack them into place rather than them pinning it on. 
Also really good for hand applique. So say you wanted to applique a circle onto something. If you cut this out, a circle out of here, press it onto your fabric with the, the shiny side down, it will stay on. You can then fold the edges of that circle on round onto here and you get a perfect shape. If you then um, press that, you can press that into place. You can then peel it off and you've got a lovely shape. So it's just a really useful temporary. It's quite thick as well. It's thicker than your bondware, but it's thicker than normal printer paper. So you can get beautiful, crisply edges and it doesn't leave any mark. Or you can use it to freeze things. Um, Sally Ann actually is going to be using this in um, the next hour when she's doing the sizzle quilt foundation paper piece again. She'll explain how it works. But I used to buy it in sheets and then I realised how much I used it. It's one of those products, this is the things I've chosen, that you use it all the time. So Bondaweb and freezer paper, brilliant products. Um, and the other product I use lots is wadding. And I talked to Oh, the extra large cutting mat is sold out, sorry. But they are really good. We will we'll, we'll get them back in stock and we'll talk about them again. The other thing I use all the time is wadding. Now, I mentioned in with the early bird that I always have a big piece of wadding. I buy one especially if I'm making a quilt, but for all my other makes. And this is a lovely wadding. This is cotton wadding. Now, this is different to the um, early bird because I because it's a cotton wadding. I like a, I like a cotton wadding because this one is actually 80% cotton, 20% polyester, and I think that works better than the pure cotton. It's, it's got a lovely loft, so it means it's got a nice sponginess to it. When you quilt through it, it, it quilts very easily. It goes under the machine really nicely. But what I like about it is that when you then put your quilt in the machine, it shrinks ever so, ever so slightly and just pulls the stitches and gives it a really sort of heirloom, traditional look. It's lovely to work with. And it feel, it's not sticky, but when you put the fabric, your sort of top fabric and your backing fabric, it sort of holds in place. It is, it's just, it's lovely and it's really nice. It's not too thick. So if you want to use it for bags and cushions, and this is often what I use it for, I always like to have a rule because it's a shame when you want to quilt something and you want to add a bit of substance and you haven't, um, you haven't got it. So I always keep a roll of this. And this queen size, this is 90 by 108 inches, which is 228 by 274 centimetres. It's a really lovely size. It's big enough for a normal sort of double bag quilt size, but... Again, it's good for all of those other makes, whether you're doing a small wall hanging, you're making an advent calendar, or you want to use it in clothing if you want to make a jacket. This is really lovely cotton wadding, and I like the fact it has that little bit of polyester, and that gives it the extra strength. So that's my favourite. And don't forget the offer. So that is £32.99, so you probably only need one of the product, and then you're up to your £50. Um, use code FACEBOOK10, so when you make sure... Don't forget, you've got to do it in one checkout. Once you've checked out, you can then relax and keep and keep shopping. So, oh, is that the early bird wadding? Oh, so the wadding that the um, the cotton wadding that I'm just talking about. There's only five in stock of those now. So if you want them, it's a really good price. I think thirty two ninety nine because it's a massive piece, and if you're using it for home sewing, it will last a long, long time. But with the early bird, we did actually put quite a lot in because we knew that it would sell out. Right, I'm going to just talk about little things now. These are the little things that I really like. Um, here a marker. Probably if you've never heard of that, you think, what is that for? So if you want to mark a piece of fabric temporarily because you're either going to do, you want to sew a straight line or say you want to... Um, you're doing some quilting and you want to mark, but you don't want to use a pen because you know it might not come out or it's maybe like a needle cord or a denim or something textured. This has just got like a little sharp point, sharp-ish point. So if you if you wanted to mark a straight line, you can take a, take a ruler and you just score along the edge. So say you wanted to do like a grid for Sashko, you score along the line, and if you get really close, he's coming in. It is really hard to show. 
I need to just move it over a bit. But can you see this line here that I've marked? Now, that's, that's strong enough and visible enough that you can sew along it. But obviously, it will just disappear because all it is is just a mark with a it's not a permanent mark but if you just want to make small marks but it will also you can draw curves with it so say you wanted to embroider your initials on something you could just draw them with this and it, it will just last long enough for you to be able to see you can draw circles with it but it is really really traditional i mean it's such a it's a little tool isn't it but it really it just really works for, for what you need. So if you want to do non-permanent marking, this is a perfect product. So it's one thing that I do use all the time. And, you know, if you saw that hanging up in a shop, you think, what is that? I don't know what's the point of that. But it is really, really good. Um, bias tape makers, I love these. And I didn't used to use them because they're quite, they're quite cheap bias tape makers and I sort of thought mm, they're probably rubbish then aren't they and it's not that these are cheap all bias tape makers are quite cheap it's not this fine but they are absolutely brilliant if you want to make bias tape so they come in two sizes there's the one inch and the half an inch so the one inch which is 25 mil that looks like this that makes one inch of tape but once it's um, f open. If you're having a double fold bias tape, which is, ba is the normal, when you buy bias tape, it's normally a single fold, which means just the edges, the raw edges are folded in. But quite often you use that to bind a neckline or the edge of a cushion or a quilt. You'll fold it in half again. So the one inch tape will give you half an inch when it's folded again. And all you do is you cut a two inch strip of fabric on the bias. You feed it through one end, the wide end and you have your iron and you press it as it comes out and in, and you have then got a strip of bias tape so you don't have to go and buy it you don't have to buy the pre-made stuff you can use fabric that matches your product because quite often when you're maybe binding a neckline or the edge of a quilt you can never find just the right color tape that you want but just use your own fabric join it all together in strips so you can make lengths and lengths and lengths so you can have a scrappy binding is lovely if you've made a quilt and you're not absolutely sure what color to do join together all the colors that are in your quilt shove them through the bias tape maker and you, then you have bias tape but you can also use straight strips of fabric you don't have to cut fabric on the bias so the only time you need to cut it on the bias is if you're going around curves if you're binding straight edges just cut straight strips of fabric using your rotary cutter and your ruler um, and then you, you just put it through the wide end and it comes out folded it's like magic but we also do it in the smaller size which is the half inch one so remember that will make half inch single fold but when you then fold that in half to bind something that will make a quarter of an inch so i have got both i have the one inch and the half inch so i can use it for different sorts of binding but I use it, I mean, I, I always, I bind quilts, but I use it for binding edges of zips if I want to put a zip on top of something. I uh, quite often will bind things to neat them in, neaten them up. So um, if I'm making a bag with a gusset, rather than sewing it into the seam, I'll often put the front and the gusset together and bind the edges because it gives it a really neat look. And if you use a fabric that's used in the project or matching, or you want something a bit of a bright, bright contrast, this is brilliant. It's just a really inexpensive but brilliant tool. And it's something I didn't use for years and years and I found it recently and I wouldn't be without them now. Um, these pins, let's talk about them because I'm on inexpensive, inexpensive gadgets. I'm going to open these up. These are quilting pins. Now, you don't have to use them for quilting. I like them. For, I'm going to put this fabric down because I think you can see it better on here. They're very long and they're very fine. Uh, and the reason, oh, they've got um, sellotape. The reason they're long and fine is so that you can go through your layers when you're pinning your quilt together. I mean, obviously they are brilliant for quilting, but when, because you can pin through the top, the wadding and the base fabric, because they're nice, they are really long and they're fine, so they'll go through. But I like to use them for all sorts of hand sewing, home sewing and dressmaking because they're fine and long. You, they slip through the fabric really easily. They have a little bit of a bend to them. 
and because they're long they stay more in place you know when you've so when you've pinned together like binding all the way around the edge of the quilt or something and then half of the pins will fall out these don't they've also got um glass heads to the heat resistant so that when you if you iron over them they won't melt and they come in two colors which i quite like because sometimes you might i often use a pin to mark things so if i wanted to mark say a you know, there's the notch, but I'm using the green one to mark something else and I can use them for different things. But they're just really, multi although they're quilting pins, I like to use them for all sorts of things because they don't mark the fabric. They're nice and long, they've got a little bit of bend and you can iron over them. So that's another thing. And the other thing is, if you drop them all on the carpet, they're really easy to find because they've got coloured heads and... Um, it's really annoying because I lose, get through so many pins because I keep dropping them on the carpet. So remember, if you're using the offer today, you've, it will only work if you check out in one go. So once you've hit your 50 or your 80 pounds, then check out. But you can't just keep checking out. It's got to be in one checkout just because of the odd way that the system works. Um, but. So all these little bit of pieces add it up you can you can have the same sewing room as me my final little thing is this zip i make a lot of zip cases zip purses cosmetic bags wallets and i always like using metal zip i think they look nicer they're more durable and if you're particularly if you're making them for a gift for somebody they just look a bit more quality so i always keep a stock of this is just a 15 centimeters because that's perfect for a zip purse because you put zip tabs on the end um, and then you add you extra so that's so it's a six inches so you can make an eight inch purse remember you can always cut them down if you want them shorter you just cut through the edges of the teeth and then you can sew some um, I always bind the edges with fabric but I always keep a stock of metal zips but I would buy, I mean, if I'm buying them, I usually buy sort of five or ten of them. Because then if you want to make a quick zip purse, then I use a metal zip. I use a bit of my bonder web to applique something on the front of it. It's just very, very quick. But a metal zip, it's just, it just looks nice. It's more quality. If you find when you use your metal zip, it sticks at all, just get a candle and rub it just along one side. And then the wax and the candle will come off and it will open smoother top useless tip because we don't sell candles but I often make them if you say you wanted to buy somebody a piece of jewellery for Christmas or a small soap or a lip balm or a gift voucher or anything like that it's always really nice it looks better doesn't it if you you know say you bought somebody a gift voucher make them a little zip purse just a bit shorter maybe a four inch one using one of these pop it inside embroider the name on or stitch it on the front and then immediately your gift is double it just looks better but it's really irritating if you haven't got the right zip, but I do like metal zips for things like that. So that's my, and then my other small gadget are machine needles because these are universal ones. There's five needles in the pack, regular point. They are assorted sizes, nine to 14, and they're just really, really useful because I always find if I break a needle, I break two or three. I don't know why, it just always seems to happen. It's, and that's another thing, isn't it? Particularly at the moment when we can't get out to the shops all the time, very, very irritating when you break your machine needle. So that's something that I would just say at one night time, I, was, I always keep a pack of two or three of these so that I don't run out. And so I've chosen these because the John James brand are really good and these are just your universal sewing machine needles. Right, let's talk about thread now, because oh, thread's very, very important. This is one of my favourite packs of thread. It's called the, the jeans thread. And I don't know whether that's because I'm constantly mending jeans, either for my children or for their friends. So jeans thread is just a little bit thicker than normal thread. But when I, when you, if you need to mend a pair of jeans or hem a pair of jeans, you can just cut, if you're mending them, you can just cut a piece of denim from an old pair of jeans, put it underneath and then lay the hole or the slit or the great big tear on top and pin it all the way around and then press it flat. And all of those threads that have ripped will join together a bit. And then you just zigzag stitch across the whole thing. And it really helps if you've got a color to match your jeans. So in this pack, you've got three different blues and a gray and a black, which pretty much covers all your jeans. 
if you want to hem jeans or if you want to add a bit of embellishment often you know you see on hem jeans are usually in this gold color but you can add a bit of a red and there's green and white and gray so this is just brilliant if you're mending jeans or hemming jeans but also if you're working with any sort of fabrics these are some really good basic colors if you want to make bag i collect old jeans I've got loads and loads of them old bits of denim because you can make loads of different things with them i make bags with them um, they're really good if you're making maybe like a wash bag or something you can put use the denim for the corners of them or make the whole thing you can make patchwork patchwork um cushions large floor cushions anything from old jeans but this pack of jeans thread i bought myself a pack quite a few years ago and i still have some left but i do use it all the time it's best really if you use a jeans needle when you're sewing on denim which is basically a size 90. so if you if you're going to be sewing with jeans you can get away with a normal needle but you might find particularly if you're going over the seams that it will break then you need a jeans needle um, my other favorite brand of thread is Aurifil because it's really really good quality and it's very fine even though it's the same weights doesn't this doesn't make sense i know it's the same weights so of 50 weight same as normal thread this pack is limited if you want and I, we've had it i'm not sure whether when we're going to get more stock of this in so if you if you want some of this, it is. the reason I like this is Aurifil thread is very good quality. It doesn't fluff and um, bump up in your needle. And it also, there's a lot on the reel, so it goes a really, really long way. There is, oh, it doesn't say on the box, and I can't remember, 1,000, 1,300 meters on these. And in this pack, you've got white, cream, pale gray, and black. So it's all the colors you basically need. So this is your, you can use it, obviously use it for quilting, for decorative stitching, but this is your basic piecing. You can use it for patchwork quilting, dressmaking, home sewing, all sorts of things. It's just, if you've never used Aurifil thread before, this is a great place to start. And if you have used Aurifil thread before, then these are some really good, really good basic colors so the orophil calm collection is really good also it's a really good gift for somebody if you want if you're thinking about buying some somebody a little gift for christmas um it's in a really nice box that's easy to wrap as well and these things are important aren't they and i don't know when or if we'll get this back in stock so uh, before christmas so it's just when we can get it back and we might not get it back before Christmas. Right, final, final thread. Final, final thread. Oh, and don't forget with that thread, it's 35 99 So um, that's near your £50, isn't it? Now I'm going to open this packet so we can see it. <laughs> this, I love this thread. Do you know why I love this thread? Because it comes in a nice tin. I'm a bit of a sucker for a nice tin. You know when you go to the supermarket and they've got things in a tin and you end up buying it because it's in a tin. Isn't that lovely? It's just like really, it's like something that your grandma would have this old, old tin. 1930, it says on it. It's just a lovely tin, but inside it's not just a tin. Oh no. It's full of thread. Ooh, I'm actually quite excited by that. So this is your Gutterman polyester. This is your absolute standard thread. This is really good for all of your home sewing, dressmaking, well also patchwork and quilting projects. It's a lovely thread to work with. I mean, I do love Aurifil, but Gutterman is a, just a great all purpose thread. And it has all the colors. So you've got 30 reels in there. There's 100 meters on each reel. And you've got the white and the black and grey but you've got three shades of grey and then you've got blue but you've got four shades of blue two greens you've got a bright red and a dark red and then you've got a dark pink and a light pink and a burgundy and a navy and orange and cream so you've got all the sort of basic colours you need so again for yourself this is great this there's not many fabrics that these threads one of these threads wouldn't go with but also because it's in a tin what a lovely gift so I would say, you know, buy it for someone. It comes with, the, you can buy it, buy it for yourself, but it's a lovely gift for someone who knows a sewer or who would like the tin. I'd love the tin. $39.99, that's very good value. And it's near your £50, isn't it? So all you've got to do is buy that, only think something for £10 more, 
and you will then say so check out so if you bought this and then bought something for 10 pound more that 10 pound more thing would be free if you work in think of it like that yeah so when you think of it the, the, the next thing you buy so you could buy this thread of tin then you could get up to 10 pounds and all those little things that i love and then and then they they would be free but that's is that is just a really good selection i love the tin as well yeah, can I have the tin? In fact, if I just leave a thread here, I'll just take the tin with me. Oh, I know. But I am suck. I think I'm a marketing man's dream because I love tins. I've got a tin of Oxo cubes. Love that. It's got a bit rusty now. <laughs> Random. Random. So now, if we're talking real, real luxury, glorious thread. Now, if you love a tin, you'll love a big plastic suitcase. So, this is Metla Poly Sheen thread. Now, don't forget with this thread, um, it is $149.99, so your split pay option counts here. The way that split pay works, I'm just going to open it up so you can see. Um, the way the split pay works is if, if you have a product that's on more than £149, you can split the payment over three equal payments. We don't charge interest. You don't make any money from that. We split it equally over three. So you pay one third now, the next third a month later, and the final third a month after that. But you don't have to wait three months to get it. You get it now. So we, as soon as you've paid your first month, it's just a way of spreading the cost on the more expensive items. Um, but just a word, you can't use split pay and the offer. You have to choose one or the other. So you can't have both. So this poly sheen thread is beautiful, really beautiful quality. And it's got the most amazing shine to it. It's the way, the way that it is made, it is mercerized and it gives it that beautiful shine. So it's obviously you can use it for normal, um, machine sewing but if you want to use it for something slightly decorative like machine embroidery or applique or if you wanted to use it for quilting it's got that lovely shine to it so if you want to try a bit of even like particularly that free um free motion quilting you can really create some beautiful effects and you're not limited at all by the color so in here it makes a ma i'm going to take out the plastic bit so it makes a massive difference Inside here as well, you've got a sh that comes with the shade card. The shade card is really nice because it's not a printed shade card. It's got, so obviously there are more colours in here, um, in the in the metal polysheen thread that we've got in here. So it's 100% polyester, but it has that beautiful shine. So in the shade card, this is real thread. This isn't just colours printed, this is actual real thread. So if I go, if you get in, you can see. So you can see that. So say, you know, maybe you've got a little shop or a little business. You could put that on the wall of it, couldn't you? So we're going to get in really close into this. And you can see all the different colour threads and that it is real thread. So you can really match it up. So you can, once you've used this thread and you see how lovely it is. So look, you see how it is real thread. Look, real actual thread. Look. Um, you can see the colours if you want to buy some more, but if you wanted to match up, these shade cards are quite expensive, but it comes free with this. You can choose the actual thread you want and then you can order it. So that's a really nice thing to have, but look at all the different colours you get in here. I mean, that's everything you'd ever need, but it is a beautiful thread and I would say, I mean, I would use it for normal sewing seams, but because it has this lovely shine to it, it really comes into its own with decorative stitching or quilting. And it is very, very, very good quality. It only, because of the, because you've got so many spools in here, it works out as £1.56 a spool, um, which actually is really good value. And that £1.56 isn't including the free case and the shade card, which you can use. I mean, obviously you've got all this lovely padding in here, but to be honest, if you got rid of the padding and everything else, you can get loads in here. You get your whole... Th you get your whole thread collection or other things in there. But obviously, it's packaged beautifully. 
So, you know, always nice to think of as a gift for somebody who might think that was a lovely thing to have like me. So I'm going to close this without it all falling apart. Look at that. And it comes in that lovely case. Look at that. It didn't even fall out either. So that's a beautiful thing. You could just carry that away with you. What shall we talk about next? The books. Let's do books. Now, gosh, this was really hard because I love craft books. So I thought, well, I'm only going to choose four. Not the easiest thing to do. But I do love the Susan Briscoe book. I re uh, Susan Briscoe, she's the queen of Shashko, isn't she? I've been on air with her a few times. She knows everything there is to know about Shashko. She really does. However, she also knows a lot about quilting. This is a really good book. So if you're a beginner to, I know it says quilting, but it means patchwork and quilting. If you're a beginner to patchwork and quilting, this is brilliant. It tells you so much. But if you are more experienced, even if you're an expert, there's a lot to learn in here. I love this book and I refer to it all the time. There is so much information. Now, I've been through here, been through this before, but it tells you in detail. I mean, it starts at the beginning about all the gadgets and materials and tools, even about your sewing machine. How does it work? What do you need? Why do you, how do you sew straight? What all the different feet? Why would you need a walking foot? But it, so all of the tools, all the tools and materials, so this is all your beginner stuff. It talks even about printing fabric, how to put colour together, how to create quilt patterns. But then it also, and it covers, you know, very traditional stuff, but contemporary as well. But then it goes through all the different techniques. So machine patchwork, very basic for the people who, you know, starting right at the beginning, how to work with different squares, you know, log cabin, how to pin two pieces together. And I love the way she's even drawn the seam allowance onto the piece, because if you're a beginner to patchwork, often the hardest thing is, thinking, oh, I can't sew in straight lines, but she says, you know, draw the lines on and do it that way. So she goes through the very beginning, but then she moves it up a bit. She changes it and makes it more, so random log cabin. She'll add a few more expert tips in. But English paper piecing, I mean, there's all sorts, all sorts of different patchwork techniques in here. She also then moves into applique. There's a whole chapter on freezer paper applique, which is a fantastic thing, how to get beautiful curved edges. Needle turn, reverse applique, Hawaiian applique, bias strip applique. So you use your bias tape maker to make your bias strips, which we had before. And then you can use this beautiful bias tape applique, shadow applique. So that's applique. Now we're moving on to quilting. How do you do quilting? How do you use templates? There's lots of little tips in here as well. Things about, I don't know how to do this. Try that, try this. It's just how to use different frames. I mean, so, and you know, and quite often it's, I think sometimes we sort of feel like we're the only, we haven't got other friends or family who do sewing quilting and we belong to all different groups. And sometimes you need to ask, you don't know how to do things. This really is your Bible to patchwork and quilting. And it's one book that I come back to all the time. There's even a chapter on Shashko and Cantha as well and hand quilting. There isn't, I think you would struggle to find anything that isn't in here. But, you know, it's showing you how to do a mitered and a curved binding. Now, that's a technique you use for loads and loads of different things. But she uses beautiful walkthrough photographs, but she'll also use diagrams. So how you'd, sometimes photographs just don't work for techniques. But it's just, this is the answer. You know, and it's even, I love this. You know, this is important, isn't it? Labelling your quilt. So if I'm going to write a label on my quilt, what should I put on it? She gives you, you know, write the name of the quilt, your name, where it was made, when it was made, why it was made. And that's just a really nice thing. How to do it. How do you put it on? Can you do it embroidery? She, you know, that's just one of those little things. I think she is such a big expert in pattern quilting. She's thought of everything. So if you want to buy even how to prepare your quilt for an exhibition. Wow. How to care and store for your quilts. There is everything in there. Anyway, if you like patchwork and quilting, if you love patch and quilting, that is the great go-to book. Um, I've only got two and a half minutes. So I'm going to do 
I'm going to do the cross stitchers bible a because this is where I started my stitching journey when I first worked on cross stitch magazines so I, this is very nostalgic to me but also when I first started working on cross stitch magazines that's when I first met Jane Greenoff and she is to me the queen of cross stitch you know she has been designing, creating, making the stitch cross stitch for so long there is nothing she doesn't know and as she says this is the cross stitchers bible so if you like cross stitch you will learn lots of this if you've never tried cross stitch this is everything you need to know there's stitch libraries all the different things there's even loads and loads of free charts and patterns in here I mean this is 14.99 if you had to just buy this one chart, it would probably cost you $14.99. So there's loads of charts and patterns in here, but also there's lots and lots about techniques. She covers things like drawn thread embroidery. So maybe you haven't tried that and want to have a go at it. She covers hardanger. Oh, I love hardanger. All of the pulled thread work. Absolutely low. She covers a CC. I love a CC and black work. Pattern darning. Isn't black work beautiful? I love that. Buttons, how to add buttons, how to use waste canvas, how to use magic canvas, working on double canvas, stitching paper. So really all about threads and techniques, but what I think is fantastic are all these free charts, free charts in this book. So if you love cross stitch, this is, of all the books I own, this is the one to buy. So anyway, I haven't got very long left. I've like run out of time and I haven't covered, I've still, there's a few things in my sewing room I haven't covered. Don't worry, but we'll do them another time. So that's a brief overview of my sewing room. Anyway, um, in a couple of minutes time, we've got Sally Ann coming up with um, the Sizzle Quilts book showing us foundation piecing. If you haven't tried it, you are going to love this hour. It's going to explain how to do it. And if you have tried foundation paper piecing, it will give you lots of inspiration. So we'll see you um, in just a couple of minutes. Don't go anywhere. While we're having to spend more time at home again, we're here to keep you busy and entertained. Sewing Street will be live every day from 8 a.m., bringing you plenty of demonstrations with our experts in dressmaking, quilting, bag making, toy making, needle felting, embroidery, and so much more. Our community of fellow sewists on the Sewing Street Fans Facebook group are there to chat to you about whatever you're making, sharing photos and advice. Check out the Sewing Street Facebook and Instagram pages for fun competitions and offers. Watch Sewing Street on Freeview 74, Sky 670, or our YouTube channel and search Sewing Street TV to find us on social media. Hello, I'm Nicola from Twinknits. I'm from West Yorkshire, but originally from York. I sell knitting kits, knitting patterns and hand-dyed yarn. During lockdown, I decided to learn to crochet a toy. My TV fame has been on the Alan Titchmarsh show and selling my finished items on BBC Casualty. like to get in touch with us during our live show and send in any messages or any questions then you can do it on studio at sewingstreet.com alternatively you can message us on our official facebook page hi i've been asked to do a little bit of an introduction about me so here goes for sewing street I'm Sally Ann Harrison. I'm based in the UK in Bristol. Um, I lived here all my life, apart from a short stint in North Carolina, where I lived um, for three years from 2000 to 2003. I specialise in patchwork and quilting. I'm a complete patchwork and quilting addict. I love small piecing, I love wool applique, all forms of applique. Um, and I also like making small little crafty projects. How did I get into sewing? Well, I've sewn all my life. I remember the first thing I ever made was um, like a little bikini top from one of my mother's old overalls when I was about nine. Um, I got married when I was about 20, 21 and started making curtains at that time. So 
I was a curtain maker for a long period of time, but it was in 2000 when I moved to the US that I really got into quilting big time. I discovered a local patchwork and quilting store. I took classes. Um, I made loads of quilts. I made some fantastic friends. Um, I met a great tutor called Michelle May. Um, and by the time I left, I was actually beginning to exhibit in 2003. So that's how I got into doing what I do. Tell us something unexpected about yourself. Well, one of the, the strange things about me is that I'm the world's worst knitter. Um, I can do most crafts. I crochet, I do punch needle, I do obviously patchwork and quilting and dressmaking, but knitting, mm -mm. I The pins go in all sorts of weird directions. I have to concentrate. If anybody you know, rings the doorbell, I can't stop mid row. I am the world's worst knitter. Sewing tips to share with viewers. Um, it's got to be the beard trimmer trick. I mean, why use an unpicker when you can use a beard trimmer to take out the se seams that you've sewn incorrectly? It's just the best tip ever, I reckon. And a claim to fame. Probably my claim to fame based on my sewing career was that in 2017, I was invited to the Houston Quilt Festival, the International Quilt Festival, and it was there that I demonstrated some wool applique. It was a fantastic experience. And if anyone's debating going to the International Quilt Festival next year, go. It is absolutely fabulous. And that's a bit about me. Thank you very much for listening. While we're having to spend more time at home again, we're here to keep you busy and entertained. Sewing Street will be live every day from 8am, bringing you plenty of demonstrations with our experts in dressmaking, quilting, bag making, toy making, needle felting, embroidery and so much more. Our community of fellow sewists on the Sewing Street Fans Facebook group are there to chat to you about whatever you're making, sharing photos and advice. Check out the Sewing Street Facebook and Instagram pages for fun competitions and offers. Watch Sewing Street on Freeview 74, Sky 670 or our YouTube channel and search Sewing Street TV to find us on social media. Hello, I'm Nicola from Twink Knits. I'm from West Yorkshire, but originally from York. I sell knitting kits, knitting patterns and hand-dyed yarn. During lockdown, I decided to learn to crochet a toy. My TV fame has been on the Alan Titchmarsh show and selling my finished items on BBC Casualty. Like to get in touch with us during our live show and send in any messages or any questions then you can do it on studio at sewingstreet.com alternatively you can message us on our official facebook page good morning and welcome back to sewing street for our foundation paper piecing hour now if you haven't tried foundation paper piecing before don't be scared i used to be i used to think oh i can't do that i can't do that it's horrible but then I had to go and it's brilliant. It's absolutely brilliant. If you suffer at all with the accuracy and you find it hard when you're piecing different pieces of fabric together to get all the points to match up all the corners, foundation paper piecing is for you because it guarantees accuracy because you're sewing through marked lines on paper. Sounds really odd and you have to sort of really think it through and get your head around it. But when you do, it is brilliant and you can create the most beautiful designs that are perfect as well. So it does make all that take out, takes away all of that ele element of trying to match seams. And I'm not sure that you would get the same perfection and accuracy without foundation paper piecing. Anyway, we've got a lovely book for you today called Sizzle Quilts. It's a brand new book. We haven't shown this before. We haven't used it before. It's already selling on pre-sale. It's 19.99. It's not in the fab in the bundles of fabric that we've got. So if you want to buy it, you have to buy it on its own. It's a really lovely book. So should we just have a quick look, quick little flick, a little flick through? Um, so 
You can create from this nine paper piece star and applique borders and patches as well. So she's shown these the two quilts in two different colorways, a cool colorway and a warm colorway. And we've got two fabric bundles from each colorway to show you, but we'll talk about the quilt first. So the, the cool is lovely. It's those really beautiful sort of peacock colors almost. They're, lovely bright lime greens mixed with turquoises and blues and then the warm colourway a lovely sort of purples and oranges and yellows and um, more grassy greens but in the book it explains right at the beginning how does foundation paper piecing work how 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 do you do it what do you use what are these solid lines and what are the dotted lines it explains all of that to you how to sew through it how do you start? What what does all these number? Because it always looks when you first come across paper pieces, you think, oh, they've all got different numbers on them. I don't know what that means. It explains it for you. It's really easy to see. It uses very, very close up photography. So things like how to move the paper from the shapes, really close up, how to put the pins in where you put the pins. So if you've never done foundation paper piecing, this really is your go-to guide. You work through it page by page and you have a go first. So this is, you know, this looks really complicated. You've got so many pieces joining in the center, but it explains how to do it, how to make rings, how to create corners. So this is a circular design that's made into a square and it explains how to square it off using the template. It goes all the way through it very simply with, I love the way, you know, things like this are really important. This is a very important part of easing a square, uh, two circular curved pieces together. So it goes, you know, it's used up almost a whole page of A4 so it can show it really close up. And if you're new to this, that's really important. Or if you've tried foundation paper piecing before and you want to get the hang of it or you want to learn more, or there's bits that you don't understand, this is great. But it is brand new today. So it explains how to construct the blocks and the borders and it breaks it down really good. So you start off with just one block and that's what Sally Ann's going to show you today is how do you make one block. The fabric bundles that we've got are using the colorways in the book. To They're your sort of inspiration bundles. They're your practice bundles. You can make two or maybe three of the blocks from these. You're not committing to making the whole quilt if you're new to this, but this gives you, we've put together, we've selected the colors for you so that you can create the warm colorway or the cool colorway. And it tells you for all the different blocks exactly what you need to cut. It makes it really simple. So section one, you need to cut a strip that's two and a quarter inches across the width of the fabric and then you cut it into smaller pieces. That makes it so easy. It takes all that sort of maths and calculation out of the way for you. It shows you how to create diamond pieces, but it really is very simple. So if you've not tried it before, you start at the beginning of the book and you work all the way through. This is the fifth block, shows you what, how do you cut it in the cool colorway, how do you cut it in the warm, depending on your preference. Obviously, you don't have to follow their colorways, but by seeing how they put the different shades together, how they've got a darker tone of the same fabrics, that just makes color choices. If you, if you don't like choosing colors, it makes it much simpler for you here. Block eight, block nine, and then the side borders, and these are lovely. Really like these, but and you know, these borders you could use on any quilt, couldn't you? Rather than just doing quite often when we make a quilt, we just put plain fabric borders, but why not add all these swirls so you could use those for other things as well? And all the cutting guides and everything you need. Then it tells you how to put the whole quilt together and how to finish it. And then in the back are all the templates. Now, there's none of that enlarging on a photocopier. Obviously, you will need to photocopy them, or you could trace them. You don't have to. You could trace them onto um, plain paper. You could probably see through this, or onto freezer paper. Or you can just scan them and photocopy them. And they have put, which is really nice, they put a one-inch square in. So you just make sure that when you scan it, because sometimes um, your scanner might not be set to 100%. You've got something to check. But there's no enlarging. It's all in here. So you could... I mean, obviously you wouldn't cut them out of here because that would ruin your book, but you could trace them or photocopy them, it's up to you. But everything is in here, everything you need from the whole book and, and all the numbers and the labels and the names and the descriptions that are on these pa papers here are the ones that you see being used in the instructions.
exactly the same. So that makes it a lot easier. So this is really popular, which I'm really pleased about because foundation paper piecing is a wonderful thing. And once you do it and once you understand it, it's like a light bulb moment. You go, oh, I love this. And by starting with this book, it will take you on to the next thing. Um, don't forget today that we are doing our special offer to celebrate the fact that we've got 10,000, 10,000 Facebook fans. If you spend 50 pounds or more, you can have 10 pounds off if you use code, the code Facebook 10. If you spend 20, 80 pounds or more, you can have 20 pounds off. But just a slight quirk in the system, you ha it has to be in one checkout. It doesn't have to be on one item, but you need to build up in your basket your 50 pounds or more or your 80 pounds or more, then check out and then the money will be taken off. You can't just pop your butt. It's not like the way that the postage works where you just keep putting it in your basket and checking out as many times as you like. You've got to check out in one go. So make sure you've built up to that before you do. So we have got four fabric bundles for you. So we have, in order to replicate this cool and warm colorway, we've got three meter fabric bundles. So this, this is the cool one block where we've got a turquoise, a lime green, white, a real sort of bright kingfisher blue, a royal blue and a pale gray. So there's a half meter each of six different fabrics there. And that's called Cool One. So there's enough in here to make two or three of the blocks. It's just a really good way of you replicating those colors and using these. You can use these to practice with, but also create the finished sample. But you know that all of these colors will go together in exactly the same way as the cool colorway of the book I'm trying to see look there's the if you look in there you see there's the, the that those colors are replicating that so that's the cool colorway are we going to do the warm one next this one is called warm one so you've got again you've got a really nice lime green a purple a pale sort of salmon pink a lovely terracotta a burnt orange and a yellow now, sometimes it's hard to put these colours together when you're looking on a website because you're not sure how they go. But these colours all blend together beautifully. <coughs> and they create those colours. So if you go onto the website and you want to know the exact colour names for these fabrics, they're all on there. Uh, if, you look, if you click on the bit on the website where it shows you the description and go on the bit that says more details, it'll give you the names of them. But I've described them to you so you can see what they are and you know that the colours. And also it means that once you've had a go with these, when you've got the three metre bundle, if you then want to make the whole quilt, the colour names are listed on the description on the website. You can then buy more. These are standard fabrics that we keep in stock all the time, as much as we can, but we will always reorder them. They're something that we can always keep in stock. So you can order more if you want to make more. But this is a really good way of starting off, creating this colourway. And each one of these blocks is big enough to make a cushion. So that's the, the two colourways. We've also got Cool 2, which is similar but different. This one has got a white, a pale grey, like a marine blue, a lime green, a bright like kingfisher blue. And that's more of a, if I put the two greens together, it's sort of a limey green and a grassy green. So very similar to Cool One, just a slight, slight difference. So if you put, if I put them together, so that's two. Same price, and that's one. So I would say that one is a brighter version, and two is slightly more muted. Because the blue is a bit softer, you've got two greens. So if you want to go brighter, more sort of peacocky, kingfisher colours, then Cool One. But if you want to go slightly more muted then cool two is the one for you. One, two. And then we've got warm two. And again, half a metre of six different fabrics. So that's three metres. So you've got a nice bright purple, a soft purpley pink, quite a bright fuchsia pink, yellow, orange, and your lime green again. So if we compare that to cool one, again, cool one is brighter, 
warm, sorry, warm one is brighter, warm two is a little bit more muted and a bit pinkier. So it just depends which variant you want, whether you want to go the sort of real, almost like primary brights, or you want to go a bit softer, then that's the difference between one and two. Okay, so that's everything. And also the freezer paper I'll just mention because Sally Ann is going to show us how to do foundation paper piecing using freeze, using the normal method, but also using freezer paper. So if you want freezer paper for this, then we do have that. That's on the um, the graphics are coming up now. That's 6.49 for 50 square feet. Wow, 12 metres long, this roll. So if you want a lot of freezer paper, then we do have that there. Anyway, that's enough about all the fabric in the book. We're going to go over to Sally now. So good morning, Sally. Good morning. Nice to see you. So what did you think about the book? I um, absolutely love the book, absolutely love the project. I must admit, I got in contact with Jess straight away and went, I really love this project. Really? Yeah. It is just, it's lovely and mm -hmm. it's stunning. I mean, I'm, I mean, I've done quite a bit of foundation paper piecing, but when I put this together and I did some sort of layouts with it, mm. I realised how it looks almost like a tile. It does, doesn't it? Yeah. It's, it is really stunning and it looks, it looks like you've had to do some really careful matching of points, but I guess because of the foundation paper piecing. Yeah that's done for you exactly <gasps> exactly so yeah. if you've not done this where do we start where right so as i say you've, you've been all the way through the book mm. the book is fantastic the one thing i would oh the one thing i would say about the book is i because i sort of, sort of dive straight in i got it right in, in the middle the all the instructions come first mm. so I mean, and she goes right the way into all the detail am i in the right place here I get told yeah. off for standing in the wrong place. <laughs> so she goes through all the blocks at the beginning, step by step. And the, uh, the other thing that I learned from this book is she actually used um, vellum. I brought a piece of vellum along. I've never used vellum for foundation right. piecing, but I would imagine you could put it through your printer and it would work the same way. Oh, OK. The advantage, I would think, with the vellum is that you can see through it. Yes, that's yeah. true. But yeah, I've never used that one, so. So I've tended to use just the foundation paper. Okay. The Carol Joack, I think. I just use normal paper from a photocopier that I buy in the supermarket. Works fine. Quite cheap. <laughs> <laughs> I know there's all these lovely products, but yeah. that's what I use. Just the normal stuff that goes through your A4 paper. The key to it is keeping a nice, you know, if you're going to use paper, you're going to use a nice small stitch. I'll be showing you yes, that this morning. Yes. So... Let's jump in, shall we? Oh, I did also, um, I really like the circular ones. There's ones towards the back which have got a circle in them. Okay. Um, I hadn't, I've never seen that before. So you... How does that work then? So you foundation piece the outside edge and then you inset a circular piece. Oh, uh, okay. How cool is that? That's really nice, yeah. isn't it? That's um, block eight. Yeah, as well. It's nice that it gives you, so you could make a whole quilt by doing one of each block, or you can just pick your favourite block, yes. repeat that, or make a cushion or yeah. a bag. Yeah, exactly. Okay, so let's get started with block one, which is one of those colourways, isn't it? You've got the sample. Yes, I think you've got um, cool one. Okay. Yeah, you have. You've got the cool one colourway. Okay. So... I'm going to talk about doing it on the foundation paper mm. to start off with. So you would lift the, um, photocopy them onto the paper mm. and cut them out. Okay. Okay. So you just scan it and print it and or, print or photocopy it yeah. if you don't have that. Yeah. Sorry, I, I said we're going to get started with block one. I've finished block one. We're doing block two. Oh, we'll show us block one then. Okay. Oh, there's block one, which is obviously In finished. cool one. Oh, it's so lovely, isn't it? I do like the um, yeah, those little sort of pops of lime green around yeah, the edge. Yeah, they're really good, aren't they? Nice. So you're using cool, cool two for your practice. No, warm two. Am I? Sorry, that's I'm good because I match them. That's cool one. Yep. And then the one that you're showing this, you're demonstrating with, right. is warm two. Yes. So, just so you can begin to see. So here we go. That is this block, block two, in this colourway. Okay. Um, and you can see I've started to put it together. And basically it's made it up of like blades. 
And here's a sample So you start blade. off by photocopying all the pieces it tells yeah. you to do yeah. and cut and them out. And cut them all out. And then you make the blades that fit together like this. And you, So I'm going to make a half and then you'd make the other half and okay. then join the so two together. So it's made up of how many blades Eight. or pieces? Eight. Root, uh, which is just groups of pieces. Yes. So okay. you can see the back. So this one's actually, see how it's all actually done over the papers. So it really is an organisational, you know, you, you've got to be organised to do this. You want to cut the pieces in the, exactly the, the order and mm. the dimensions that they say, line it all up. I mean, I've got like little bags with the colours cut, you know, written on them. That's really nice though, isn't it? Because it's very methodical. That's what I love about foundation papers. You have to think and you have to be, be calm and you do yeah. it, but you do it sort of systematically bit by bit by bit. And then it suddenly starts growing. And you create this. Yeah, it's process thing. driven. You don't want anybody, or you don't want the cat calling over. No, it. <laughs> but it is. It's. I find it. It's one of those really meditative, mindful tasks, yeah. isn't it? It's a lovely thing to do on a quiet, rainy afternoon. Yeah, and these <laughs> colours as well. I mean, they're sort of so joyful as yeah, well. Yeah, they're aren't lovely, they? aren't yeah. they? So right. once you've cut the, you photocopied your pieces. Now, yeah. what's first? Okay, so we're going to assemble. So I don't know if you can see, but this is actually made up of three individual pieces. Okay. Um, and she tells you how to join them. They've got little stars on them. So you join the one star piece. I don't know if you can see that, the one star piece. Okay. So how do you make just one of those then, right at the very beginning? Okay. So we'll start off with that one. Here is the piece that I cut earlier. Oh, pins got stuck. Right. I'll put the glasses on. So I would start in the centre with the pink segment. I'm going to use a bit of um, glue. Okay. So glue. So, right, just glue pen. Yeah. Just to cover that area. So you okay. glue on the back yeah. of yeah. piece so of one. Yep. And make sure that it covers that And it tells you, area. does it say on the paper what colour to use there or...? Yeah, I've written it on there, but in the pattern, it, you know, you've got to transfer your mm. colours into the segment. Oh, OK. Yeah. Right, so you could just label them like, well, like you've done. You've yep. got pink or whichever colour you decide to use. Then what you would do is you actually peel it back. I'm using a add a quarter. So I'm going to fold it on the solid lines. These um, templates have actually got dotted lines. That's the quarter inch, mm. which is helpful if you want to use them. But I'm not going to use them. I'm just going to um, look at the solid lines, which are the lines that you sew on. Right, okay. okay. So I'm going to fold it back on the solid line and then add my quarter. Okay, so you fuck because the solid is the sewing line, yes. but you need to cut it quarter of an inch bigger than that. Yeah, you do. I'm just going to take that off there and then I'm going to spin it around the other way. I'm gonna, again, I'm going to fold it on the solid line, add a quarter. Now the other two segments in this are green, so I'm going to add the green portion. So I'm the fabric's going on the back. I'm going to sew on the top on the solid lines. Okay. I'm okay. And again, it tells you on the paper which yeah. colour to use where, and the piece is already cut out. Yes. So I'm just going to hold this in place, but you. Oh, I've, which is quite nice because sometimes with foundation bit you don't know how big a piece to cut and you end up cutting the piece too big or too small. Too small or, or with the wrong angle. The number of times I've done that, you know, it, <laughs> no the angle's the wrong way round, yeah. Mm. And it's not the easiest thing to unpick. No. <laughs> without ruining the paper. So really. that's really, for a beginner, it's brilliant that they've given you the pre-cut sizes. Yeah. So I would recommend that you use a, perhaps a fatter needle than usual, something like a 14. Okay. And a small stitch. Um, what, I've got this on 1.8. This is on. Okay. Yeah, so, so that you so you, that you make lots of perforations so that the paper comes off easier. Okay. So it's purely for perforating yeah. the paper. Yeah. So I'm not quite sure whether this is going to come out. I've moved my needle around a bit. There we go. So I'm just sewing on the solid line. And make some room so that I can press this as I go. Okay. 
that's what I like about foundation paper using is that it's not it doesn't get boring because you sort of fold sew <laughs> press and yep. then you keep doing all of those little stages so it's quite nice if you've got your cutting mat next to you like you have yes with where you're all together yeah, if you want to set yourself up with it mm. all in sort mm. of the same machine, the mat. The, uh, and it's lovely. Yeah. I, I, always, I find because sometimes, you know, when you have to do the same thing all the time, but because you keep stopping and every time you press it open like this, it reveals the next section. It does, yeah. So, so that's simple, go. isn't it? All you're doing is... Pressing it to one side. Sticking a piece of paper to fabric and then sewing the next one along a line as well. Yeah. So you haven't got to think about seam allowances or... No, it's all actually in the template, so Brilliant. as long as you're covering the paper, you're going to be all right. Let's put the other one on. So I'm just lining it up with the edge. I'm just going to sew again on the solid line. I've sewn right into the seam line on that one, um, so I, which I would always do unless there's a pivot point, and I'll show you some of the pivot points. Oh, that are okay. On the so you sew right up to the edge, yeah. of the, off the edge of the paper. I have. Can you see the stitches are nice and small? So hopefully. Yeah. Can you see how small they are? Mm, let's see. No, we can't because nope. it's sort of... Okay. I'll iron it out then. I don't think it shows up very well on that fabric, but just remember to use like, less than a two. Yeah. Okay, so I've given it... Actually, if I got this one right... <laughs> <laughs> It'll work now. <laughs> there you go. This so it's very important to press... As you go, yeah, to keep it nice and flat. And I guess you probably don't use steam then. Because no, I tend paper. to use a dry right. iron, <laughs> which is a good point. No, it's just that I know when I first did it, I used steam and all the paper wrinkled. Yeah. <laughs> the Didn't cross my mind. The other thing that I did do as I went along, sometimes I actually put an extra bit of glue in there because okay. things have sometimes flap around and you want to keep it... When you So if you're doing like an edge piece, then you just pop it down. Yeah. Let's give it another press. It should give up steaming, though. It will in a minute, yeah. I hope so. I mean, you can use a bit of steam, it's just not too much, so I just wrinkle the paper. Yeah. Okay, so what you're going to do now mm. is cut it square with the edge, with the dotted edge of a piece of foundation paper. So that's where you do really do need your rotary cutting equipment for foundation yep. paper piecing. I suppose you could do it without. You could do it with scissors, couldn't you? I mean, it would take you longer. You but could if do. If you didn't have rotary cutting equipment, you could just do it with scissors, but it would be worth investing in. Yeah. So this one, the actual print has gone slightly. You can see it's. I've lost it just slightly from the edge of the paper, so I'm adding a quarter inch to that solid line to make my piece. And here... There is a little. So there you go. That's my so these first are not these piece. pieces of paper are not reusable. Once you've used them once, yeah. you then have got to photocopy the book if you need to once they make another block. They are a one time use only because you're sewing through them and ripping them off. So don't think you can keep the paper forever. That's why you don't cut them out of the book. <laughs> right, so that's our first piece. Let's not get myself. Well, confused. That was quite simple. You over I think here. the reason I never, I didn't do foundation paper using because I thought it looked really difficult. So I just thought, oh, I thought I can't start. But then once I took a deep breath and had to go, <laughs> I realised it was actually quite easy. It's the precision that is so lovely. It is because yeah. you just can't get that, can you? And I think particularly when you're doing circular pieces like this, and you often see it done with blocks like Mariner's Compass. Yeah. You just can't get that precision without foundation paper piecing. Okay, so this is the second piece. So there's the pink bit down the middle. So I'm going to turn it over and just put some glue 
on that. So with the fabric, you put it, the fabric has to be right sides. Wrong side against wrong the side. wrong side of the yeah. template. So if the fabric's right sides down, the template is right sides up. So wrong sides <laughs> together, yeah. wrong side of paper to wrong side yeah. of fabric. So that when you turn it over, basically, I mean, which is fine if you're using plain fabrics, that's the beauty, you don't have to think about it. But if you're using a print fabric, make yes, sure that different. when you turn it over, the print is the right side up. And so you will get it wrong once or twice or more. Oh, I got it wrong loads of times. <laughs> so the number of times I actually cut off the foundation as well, or cut yes. off the piece that I've just sewn on. Mm. <laughs> that's very annoying, isn't yeah. it? And the more you do it, the less often you make those mistakes. But you will, it will happen. And it's because you're not concentrating. I think yeah. you will, I always start off well. And then I get on a bit of a roll and I'm yeah. not concentrating. But that's why it's just a lovely task. And also, it's one of those jobs that you can put down and come back to. Because it doesn't move around. It is where you stop. So you can leave it, just do an hour and leave it and come back another day. Yes, yeah, exactly. It's but if you really want to take your mind off something, this is perfect. Yeah. Or your mind off everything, really. So this piece, I don't know if you can see on the camera. Actually, I'll put it back here. You can see that it's got something called a pivot point. Right. So you want to sew into that pivot point and do a small reverse. The idea behind the pivot points is that it will help you flatten the seams out on the back. Um, ah, OK. So, so you it have enables to you to stitch at yeah. the pivot point. You do a little reverse stitch. It enables you to do something like this, oh, okay. where lots of points meet, so it's able to flatten it out. Oh well, that's nice because okay. quite often when you get that and points meet, you can you end up with a bold, big bulge. You exactly. can't get it to lay flat. Oh, well, that's really good. Yeah. So, I'm going to try and start off right in there. I'm going to do a couple of stitches forward and a couple of stitches back. There we go. So have you started at the pivot point? Yeah, okay. you can start or finish, it doesn't really make so any difference. So what do you do? Just do a few stitches forward and back? Yeah. Okay. At that point. Piece out. Give it a press. And then the next piece. Remember the, all the sizes for the pieces right at the beginning of the project so you don't have to think about oh, which is great isn't it because yeah. i honestly think that's the hardest I thing do. and i i always end up cutting really big pieces of fabric <laughs> so that it's big enough a number of times i've sort of cut it off or cut it too small mm. and i think to myself that's it i'm going to cut something really, really big, big. This i know and then six it's, inches and then it's <laughs> such a waste isn't it i yeah. end up cutting big pieces so it's actually this is quite a good way of learning the size of piece you need yes. because they're all cut out so if you've done foundation paper piecing before by it being telling you what pieces you need to cut, when you then do it yourself later, you'll know how much bigger it needs to be. Because I think that is always the difficulty yeah. because you're almost working in reverse. It's hard to work out the size of the piece. Okay. So again, I did a little reverse into that pivot point. Set my seam. Yeah, so let's do, while sally is just doing that, we're going to do a, just a quick roundup. Now, I've kept my bundles in separate areas. So, the books in the graphic on this, is the book on the screen? Okay, so we're going to do the cool bundle, cool one, cool one. So, in this bundle, you've got a, like a kingfisher blue, a lime green, white, a bright royal blue and then a real royal blue and a pale grey. You've got half a metre of each of these fabrics, so that's three metres in total. It's a beautiful bundle. I mean, it's really bright. I love the that little pop of lime green that's, pop, that's put in there because I think it's often putting these fabrics, particularly when there's three blues together, knowing which works. We've done that for you. We've taken the book, we've matched the fabrics up, so that cool bundle will make two to three of the blocks that Sally's doing, so great for practising. If you then get carry on and think, oh, I want to make the whole quilt, if you go onto the website, the actual colour names are listed, so you could order more of these. But this is just to get you started and to show you the colours that go together. Um, warm one bundle, 
So this creates the warm colourway that's in the book that we were talking about earlier, which is the um, the warm colourway that Sally is using at the moment. In this, you get this sort of limey grass green, a purple, a really soft peachy pink, like a um, a burnt orange, a bright orange and a yellow. I mean, and you wouldn't normally think about putting these colours together because you've got green and purple and pink. And, you know, you. I think it would be very difficult to put this together yourself without seeing all the colours, but they go together really well. And they do, again, it's this real bright green that really zings it up and makes it really nice and fresh. I've got a nice message from Sue. Great to see Sally Ann back and fit. Her demos are great. Love the book and the fabric bundles, but which one do I choose? Mm, well, Sue, are you cool or are you warm? <laughs> There's the thing. So, Cool 2. Now, Cool 2 is, again, it's the same cool colourways, but this is a softer, more muted version of Cool 1, which is much brighter. So, you've got the white and the grey again, but you've got a marine blue. You've got two shades of green, sort of an apple green and a lime green. And then you've got that kingfisher blue. But I think it's the addition of the extra green in the marine blue that just softens this palette down. So if you want it cool, but just softer, that's the one to go for. So if I put them together, look, that's one and that's two. One, two. So you can see how that's just a bit softer than that one. But they're really nice. Now I'm going to separate them. You not, can't sit one, two because otherwise I will get confused. This is warm too. So in this one, you've got purple. That's, a, that's like a pale burgundy, very, very light burgundy. Then you've got a fuchsia pink, quite a bright sunshine yellow, a burnt orange, and then that lovely apple-y green. But together, they make a really warm colour palette and you know putting that apple green in isn't something that you'd necessarily think of yourself but it really gives it a bit of a bit of brightness and that's um so that's warm one and that's warm two so you can see they're the same warm colour palette but this one is just a little bit more muted and this one is brighter and don't forget this the offer today Oh, no, I've got something. I've got something under my skin, like a splinter. And it's really annoying me. I can just feel it there. So I don't know what it is. I'll have to put some sanitizer now. Now I've bitten my fingers. But there is something. I've got a splinter or something. Um, don't forget today to celebrate the fact that we now have 10,000 fans on the Sewing Street fan page. You can join if you like. Easy, easy. Just go on to Facebook and you can join. But we've now got 10,000 people who who contribute to us, get, tell us what they think, give us ideas, show us their product. That's my favourite bit, is the projects you show us, all the things you've made. But to celebrate that, we're giving you £10 off if you spend £50 or more today. You have to use code FACEBOOK10 when you check out. Um, just because of the oddity of the system, you have to get your £50 or more in one basket and then check out. You can't just check out several times. It's all got to be checked out in one go. So just sort of add it all up, put it in your basket, and once you hit the £50, then you can check out and you get your £10 off. But if you think you're going to spend £80 or more, then you can have £20 off. That's amazing. But again, you have to use the code Facebook20 for that. And again, you've got to check out in one go. So just have a think about what you're going to spend and what you're going to put out. And you can't the postage still works the same as in you can check out as many times as you want, but in order to get this offer of the Facebook 20 or the Facebook 10, you've got to check out all in one go. Anyway, back to Sally. So where have we got to okay, now? Okay, so whilst you were doing that, I actually pieced the middle section. It was honestly that quick. So right, so we've done one, two and three. Three, yes. And the, let's get rid of, stop that flapping around a minute. So you piece all of the sections like that separately? Yes. And then you sew them together? Yes. So does that make it hard for matching up points and... No, because I don't know if you can see, it's got two stars on here and it shows you that it's got two stars then on that one. Okay, it's can coming you see in the close, two? can you see, yeah. And then that matches to two. Oh, okay. So you can see where you're going. And look at that, they, they sit on top of each other and they are perfect. You know? So because the paper, because you're sewing onto paper, yep. it stays... Yeah. And I tend to use the, the clips. 
Okay. Clips work really well with the paper. And why is that then? They just because if you use a pin, it tends to sort of buckle the paper. Okay. Whereas the clips and the clips are very easy to take out as well. So yeah. 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 Okay, so I'm going to sew those two together along that line. Um, and again, I'm starting in the seam allowance, the small stitch. If you've got a needle down facility, it's a good idea to use it, stop things moving around. And I'm going to go down to that pivot point. Oh, okay, which is marked on the paper. Yeah. I'm going to reverse and hope. There we go. So, hopefully, this piece, you can see now, is looking like this piece. So, this is those two. Okay, and it has. I mean, that's it. That that's what would be hard without paper piecing yes. is matching those yeah. two because they've got to match. Yeah, and or you'd lose the exactly. look. Exactly, and the matching that you get is just amazing. You know, it's beautiful, isn't it? It's the paper, isn't it, that does it that <laughs> that make that does it without yeah. that. I mean, you you could do it without paper, but you'd have to be a lot of pinning, yeah. <laughs> a lot of pinning. Yeah, I'm picking. Okay, so this is the bottom segment, and okay. again, you can see that there's the one star there and there's the one star on the back so you know that you're pinning the right Brilliant, and you just match together. up the edges of the paper. Just matching up the edges of the paper and popping on a, a clip or a couple of clips. Might I've always wondered to. how people do this when they design foundation paper piecing. That's Because um, you've got to work out how you can cut things up and break them down, down and exactly, join them pieces. Yeah. But I think it's a real art form. But luckily with this book, someone else has done all that for you so you haven't got to think about <laughs> it. So. I'm starting right in the pivot point that's marked that circle and I'm going to do a little reverse. Ooh, back a bit further than I anticipated. So there's 39 more days till Christmas so there's plenty of time to buy the book, buy the bundles and make some presents. You Rip. could do this in Christmas colourways couldn't you because it's a real star. I could do. Mm. Oh got another message. From Heather, morning. morning. What a fab book it is, Heather. You're absolutely right. Could you incorporate some pattern fabric into these designs? Maybe some fussy cutting. Yes, oh of my course. goodness me, yes. Yes, you could. <laughs> you <laughs> could. sets my level of excitement. Then it's just like, oh my mm. god, yeah, that would be fantastic. Yeah, no, I mean, if you're starting out, I would say use plain fabric because you haven't got to think about the right side yeah. and the wrong side, and you haven't got to think about pattern placement. But once you crack the the formula and the technique behind it. Yeah, exactly. I mean, just think of this one. If you fussy cut something that, like a circular design into each one of those. Mm. Wow. It would look amazing, wouldn't it? Or the ones with the circle in the middle. Mm. You could put something circular in there. And because well. you only need little pieces as well. It works really well yeah. for fussy cutting, doesn't yeah. it? But if you're starting, I would do your first one with plain. Yes. Because yeah. it's just easy, yeah, isn't it? Yeah, exactly. You can see where you're going. Get your head around the technique and the fabric placement, and then you can start fussy cutting. Yeah. Okay, so I've done the diamond shape, so I was going to do the, what they call the wedge shape, which is this shape, using freezer paper. Okay, so, so why do you use freezer paper So then? freezer paper, a freezer paper template you can use over and over. Do they mention that in the book? Um, I think so, yes they do. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So freezer paper is paper one side and slightly glossy the other. The wonderful thing about freezer paper is when you iron it, it sticks to fabric and a template like this you could use probably about five or six times. Okay. Okay, so I've already used it once. And the idea is that you, it's a similar idea, you, you sew on the lines on the front and the paper is adhered to the back, but you just iron it on, which means that you don't have to unpick it. Right, okay. You can just peel it off. Okay. Okay, so if we look at this piece, so we need a yellow piece to go in the middle. So what section are we doing? So you this doing is now? the wedge. This is one of these. Segments. Oh, okay. Okay, so I'm just going to iron that over that central section. I don't know if you can see. I've already creased it as well along those lines. So at home, what would I have used? It's a good idea to put the creases in. So I would have used a little piece of card, and then just folded it back. Okay. Because it helps with placement as you go. Okay. So let's just 
iron the yellow piece on. So that means you don't have to use the glue? Yes. So it's going to stick slightly to the board. So that's a good yellow piece. Okay, it was. It's, it's, I don't know. I don't know how it works, freezer paper, because it just does not mark the fabric. No, it's incredible. I do like the way it says on the package: "Great for freezing meat." <laughs> I wonder how many people use it to freeze yes. meat in, a, in comparison to how many people. But use it it's like of all the things. Why meat? I mean, I'd say great for freezing small chocolates. You know, <laughs> or strawberries. Yeah. Strawberries great for freezing strawberries dipped in chocolate, but meat. OK, so Great. the yellow piece is in position. I'm just going to fold it back on that line and I'm going to use my add a quarter exactly the same as I would do previously with the ordinary paper. Mm. I'll get my purple piece and I'm going to line my purple piece up. So I'm holding the paper out of the way. Can you see that? clips in it. Oh, you need to just move your head back a bit. There we go. Okay. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to sew down this line really close to that fold. Oh, okay. Yeah. So you're not actually sewing through the paper no, now? No, I'm not sewing through the paper at all. So I guess with this technique is you don't have to rip the paper out, no. but you've got to sew more carefully. You've got to be careful not to nick the freezer paper. Yeah. yeah. So what's so when, when you do um, foundation paper pieces, which method do you use? A bit of both, really. It depends on the size of the piece, and also it depends how many you're making. I mean, the advantage with this, you think to yourself, well, I'm going to make eight of these. I only have to have one template. Yes, that's yeah? true. Yes. So that saves you time. But I, I would say I don't think this is quite as accurate because you think about the way that you're doing it. You're just butting up against that. It's yeah, not it's not as, as accurate no. as sewing through lines. No. Okay, so sewing that in there. So I'm going to put the freezer paper back, set the seam, and then open it up. But it would be very good to use, even you know, but just for sewing through. You could use it for foundation paper, but for sewing through because it would hold in place, rather than having to use a glue stick. Yes. Because I presume you can sew through it and and rip it yes i would have i would have thought so well yeah i'm sure i've done that previously yeah. for so it would it's so for beginners using freezer paper to make your templates and actually sew through them in the normal way it would it would make it easier because you wouldn't have the sort of the bits flopping about and the no and the first piece holding that in place would make a big difference yeah it would do okay so same process i've just used my add a quarter added a quarter Peeled it back. Oh, I stopped myself bending over that time. I'm just going to put a couple of clips. But again, I've used I've used a small stitch in exactly the same sort of way because um, there's lots of pieces. You don't want it to start coming apart. A small stitch means yes, it's yeah. It just stays. Yeah. Also, if you know, if you haven't done only done a few small reverse stitches yeah. it will s stay together better by doing small stitches small stitch length So no floppy corners with yeah. this technique. So again, ideal plain paper, plain fabric and freezer paper. Just trimming it off. And you just trim it level with the outer edges. Yes. So again, you're going to make sure that you're I'm spinning them out so that you always cut away from you. Curve is a little bit more challenging, but we'll, we'll freehand it. Oops. Okay. okay, so there Lovely. is your wedge. So that's your sort of outer wedges yes. to make the circle. 
So the best thing about this, though, is it actually should just peel. Can you see how it easily it'll peel off? Oh, wow. That's amazing, and now you've got your yep. whole piece. Just take out some paper out of this one. So that that's how you sort of peel off freezer paper. So this is how you would begin to take out the paper. So do you take the papers out before you join all the pieces together? In the book, she recommends keep it taking out the pieces, sorry, taking out the edge, you know, the seam allowance mm. edge. Um, but I didn't do that. I like to try and keep the paper in as long as possible. So you would I just guess it's up to you, isn't it? You can take it apart. When, when you want. I tend to keep mine in and although it's harder to take out the pieces within the seam allowance yeah. afterwards because it's all then been sewn together, it's more accurate. And I think if you're beginning, when you sew two pieces together, I remember the first foundation paper piece, I, I took all the paper out before I sewed the blocks together and they didn't quite join up. Yeah, I, <laughs> I, I do. I like to try and keep it in as long as possible. And also and I felt, felt, particularly with the curves, that they needed that support. Right, okay. So we've only got five minutes left. Okay. Would you, so what, how do you, first of all, how do you take the paper out? So I've just been basically lif lifting it out with my fingernail. Okay. And sometimes if it, if it won't come out using like a rubber, oh, okay. the end of a, on a pencil, you know, right. on the end of a pencil, yeah. that will help it as well. But do support it, you know, don't, um, don't pull at it because you because a lot of these pieces are actually on the bias and you don't want them to warp. Okay. So, so do just be do a little bit gentle with so them. So give yourself time to remove paper. Yeah, I usually give it to my husband. He sits in front of the motor racing. Oh right. <laughs> <laughs> and it's his job to take out the papers. I don't think my husband would agree to that. <laughs> <laughs> so that's how the paper would come out. So then you're into joining it together. So your next step with this piece would be to join it to that piece. So join that piece to that piece. So I'm going to use some clips. Right. I'm going to sew along the solid lines. And that's a pivot point, so I'm going to reverse there. to that one. Oh, okay. Okay, do you want me to go ahead and show you the Y-seam? Yes, yes. Okay. We've already got um, about three minutes left okay. now. So, I'm going to line it up. I'm going to do this piece first. So you do, you make one of the sort of centre blocks and one of those edge blocks and then you start joining them all together. Yes. Or one of the pink, yeah. and, pink and green and then yeah. you do the purple and the yellow. Yeah. So, again, I'm going to go from that pivot point and that would definitely be one of those disadvantages of taking the papers out is you wouldn't be able to necessarily see the pivot points which is important to get that yeah. sort of center accuracy yeah Now I go back and join in that pivot. So to do that, you need to lift, lift that out of the way. Okay. And okay. do you start at the pivot point again? Um, I might do. It depends how the fabric, you know, how well it's fitting together. I think it's. I don't think there's any hard and fast rule. Okay. Let's try and. 
get it to sit together. Well, I think, okay, so you, because we're going to have to okay. finish there, unfortunately. So you start at the pivot point again, and so you go from the pivot point out one way, yeah, and you the could, pivot point yeah. and out the other way, right. and that creates that seam. Yeah. That's, it's really clever, isn't it? What a lovely book. Well, thank you for that, Sally. You've shown that really well. That's okay. really sort of, I think, for anyone who hasn't trade, tried foundation paper piecing before, this is a really, you know, a really good book and a really good technique. And if, you know, if you've bought the book or any of the bundles, remember that this will be on YouTube afterwards. Just write down the date so you remember and watch again because, you know, once you've got the book, you can go through, watch Sally Ann's demonstration because that was fantastic, really explained how to do it. And then you'll know. So let me just have a quick run through the fabric bundles again. So cool one, which is this one. This is the, there's six different fabrics here. There's a half a metre of each of the fabrics. So that's three metres in total. You've got a, like a bright kingfisher blue, a lime green, white, a bright royal blue, a more deeper royal blue and a pale grey. But that will give you the cool colourway that's in the book that you can see right at the beginning. Okay? If you want, if you want the warm colourway, this is warm one. And you've got an apple green, purple, a peachy pink, burnt orange, bright orange and yellow. And these are lovely, aren't they? So that gives you that really lovely, cool, warm colourway. It's quite hard to sort of pick yourself to know what colours when you're... It's all right if you're in a fabric shop, but if you're trying to buy online or something, it's very hard to see. But that gives you the warm colourway, as you can see, that's in the book. Now, if you wanted a more muted, cool colourway... Cool 2 is the one for you. There's, again, half a metre of six different fabrics. So that's three metres in total for only 19 99 You get white, grey, a marine blue, a lime green, an apple green, and a kingfisher blue. So it's the same colour palette as Cool 1, but slightly more muted. So it depends which one you want to use. So if I show you, there's one and there's two. Cha, cha, cha. One, two. One, two, two. I'm not very good at dancing, so I don't know. Two, one. But that's two and that's one, just so you can see the difference. Then we have warm two, which again is a slightly more muted, more subtle version of warm one. Purple, a very pale burgundy, a fuchsia pink, yellow, burnt orange and a lime green. Warm two has now sold out. So we'll just move that to over there. So if you want warm, you have to have warm one, which is this one here. But as you can see, if I put it together with the book, that does mimic that colourway beautifully. So if you want to have a go, this, this bundle, well, depending on how you cut and which block you use, will make two or three of the blocks. So it's very good for practising. As we said, if you haven't done foundation paper piecing before, Plain fabric's your best start off because there isn't the right and the wrong side, so you're less likely to go wrong. Um, but obviously, if you want to use this palette, when you've got it at home, you can then select other fabrics from your stash at home to mix with it because you know that these colours work together. And then obviously, you can make that bigger, you can make more use of it by putting small ones. If you're more experienced at foundation paper piecing, you could fussy cut more print fabrics, mix that in and use the colours that we've selected for you to match them with the colours in your stash. And then that will create an even bigger piece. And as there's, what does it say on all this, 39 more days to Christmas, there's still time to buy it and make it for somebody before Christmas. So the book, Sizzle Quilt, Becky Goldsworth, incredibly popular. We haven't got many left in stock, so I would put them in your basket now. It's got nine paper piece stars and a plique. It really is the complete guide. It is just foundation paper piecing. There's nothing else in here, just foundation paper piecing, but it explains to you exactly how to do it. It shows you how to, in very, very large, clear, close-up photos, how to do foundation paper piecing. It demystifies it for you, it explains how to work it, shows you all the different blocks. There are nine different blocks in here. So you can make a quilt that has all the different blocks, or you can just take one block and just keep repeating them. You can do it in the warm colourway or the cool colourway, or just choose your own colourway. It doesn't have to be one of those, but by using the pictures in the book, you can see how they've put together dark and light tones, to, so it forms almost a three-dimensional look, even though it's not, but it gives that, 
it's very much some of these blocks are very much illusion quilting one of my favorite things by just using different colors it looks 3d but at the back of the book are all the templates they're all a hundred percent as well so you just have to photocopy them and then use them because you only use them once unless you use the freezer paper template um, technique but you only use them once and it's really nice it's got all the points on the stars for matching up the pivot points they're all labeled but if you haven't tried foundation paper piecing this is a great book and if you have tried it you are going to love that so obviously you remember we've got the special offer and there's a lot of you with these in your baskets waiting to build it up so once you've got 50 pounds or more in your basket if you use the code facebook 10 we will give you 10 pounds off if you have got 80 pounds or more in your basket when you check out use facebook 20 and then we will give you 20 pounds off that's in celebration of our 10,000 followers so remember, they've got to be in all in your basket. You've got to check out at the same time. Don't have to all be the same thing. It can be a multitude of things, but they have to be all in your basket when you check out. Okay. So after the break, we've got some wonderful new fabrics for you. We've got a brand new Riley Blake collection designed by Mink Minky Kim. It's really lovely. So um, and a really lovely printed panel with some matching fabrics. So. Don't go anywhere, join us in a couple of minutes and we'll be showing you some brand new fabrics to add to your stash. Hello, I'm Nicola from Twinknits. I'm from West Yorkshire, but originally from York. I sell knitting kits, knitting patterns and hand dyed yarn. During lockdown, I decided to learn to crochet a toy. My TV fan, has been on the Alan Titchmarsh show and selling my finished items on BBC Casualty. While we're having to spend more time at home again, we're here to keep you busy and entertained. Sewing Street will be live every day from 8am, bringing you plenty of demonstrations with our experts in dressmaking, quilting, bag making, toy making, needle felting, embroidery and so much more. Our community of fellow sewists on the Sewing Street Fans Facebook group are there to chat to you about whatever you're making, sharing photos and advice. Check out the Sewing Street Facebook and Instagram pages for fun competitions and offers. Watch Sewing Street on Freeview 74, Sky 670, or our YouTube channel and search Sewing Street TV to find us on social media. Hi there, my name's Alison Marion and I'm thrilled to be joining the Sewing Street family. I live in Staffordshire where I run a couple of sewing groups and I have a passion for vintage sewing machines and also a plique. I've stitched in some form for as long as I can remember, but I absolutely love teaching and helping people stretch their skills and hopefully demystifying some of the techniques that can be quite daunting for beginners. So I'm looking forward to meeting the team and getting into the studio. See you soon. Have you heard about Yarn Lane, a TV show dedicated to knitting, crochet and all things yarn? bringing you demonstrations from our expert guests as well as the latest tools. Watch us on Freeview Channel 74, Sky Channel 670 or on our YouTube channel. And find out what's coming up on the show by following us on Facebook and Instagram. Subscribe to our email newsletter or visit the programme guide on our website at www.yarnlane.com If you'd like to get in touch with us during our live show and send in any messages or any questions, then you can do it on studio at sewingstreet.com. Alternatively, you can message us on our official Facebook page. Hi, I'm Wendy Orlando and I'm a craft blogger. You can find me over at thecraftyco.com and if you do head on over and have a peep, you will see that I'm a tutorial blogger. I do all kinds of crafts, but my passions are crochet, knitting and sewing, which I've done for over 45 years. 
In that time, I've made lots of mistakes, but I have learned lots of tricks and top tips that I can't wait to share. What I'd like to bring to the Sewing Street table is to show that you don't need to have gone to university or have a degree in design to be able to sew. You just need passion, a bit of courage to take the first steps and a whole lot of patience. Oh, and an unpicker. You will need an unpicker. I do hope that you will follow me as I take my Sewing Street journey and I look forward to seeing you all again soon. And good morning and welcome back to Sewing Street for the fabulous fabric hour. So we've got this brand new collection from Riley Blake today. Love Riley. If you know Riley Blake fabrics, you'll know what lovely quality are they are. They are 100% quilting weight cotton, but they are very, very good quality, which means I'm going to give this one a little flap so you can see what I mean. They have a lovely drape to them. They drape really beautifully, but they're very smooth. And what I like about them is that when you have good quality quilting cotton, it presses really well. It presses, you can get the creases out of it, but you can always put the creases in it really well. And it's smooth and it cuts. There's just a difference. Well, you know, you're quilters, aren't you? Anyone who's a quilt or a sew or fabric, you know the difference with quality fabrics. They do press, cut and sew better. But Riley Blake is one of my favourites. So this is a brand new collection called Idyllic. And it's been designed by Minky Kim, who I've used... I've come across quite a lot. We used to, she does a lot of designing for, um, for Riley Blake in fabrics, but she also designs and writes her own books of lots of lovely items like beautiful little zip purses and bags. And she does lots of fussy cutting and uses lots of tiny detail. She's Korean heritage. And I think she uses that as inspiration for all the little, little details. There's a lot of attention to colour and print and ideas. Now this whole collection has been based on her sort of childhood memories of of going to um, florists and little shops and visiting people and it's just it is a very nostalgic collection. Now this is not the whole of the collection but everything that we have of it. We have selected a cross-section of the colourways and the prints that are in the collection and they blend together beautifully. Now this is our mega bundle. It's 95 pounds, 49 pence. And in it, you get one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, twelve half meters. So in total, that's six meters. Now, if you buy this, this takes you over the 80 pounds. So when you spent, because of our celebration of 10,000 members on our Facebook fan page, woo, you get £20 off when you spend £80 or more. So this is £95.49, but to you, if you use your code, it's £75.49. Now do remember the very oddity of this is that you have to put everything in your basket and check out in one go to get the offer. So if you spend £50 or more, you get £10 off. But if you spend £80 or more, which is relevant to this bundle, we will give you £20 off your order. But you have to have it all in your basket and check out at the same time. We don't know why, it's just the way it works. So straight away, put that in your basket, check out, done. So shall we have a look at them now? We are also um, selling them by the half metre. Whoa, where should we start? So, I like this one. Can we start with this one? Okay. This is called Motifs in Raspberry, and I'm going to open it up so you can really see it. I'll put my glasses on so I can actually read it. So, this reminds Minky Kim of going to florists when she was younger. And I love the way they've got, she's got, it's all line drawing. So, she's got um, roses hanging up by their stems. She's got a, a ball of twine with scissors at the top and then bottles of lemonade and it says vintage love, antique friend. It's beautiful because the background colour is a real sort of strawberry pinky red and everything is line drawn in white on it. So it's lovely to use as a whole fabric. 
you know, if you want to put it with quilting. If you cut it up into little pieces, it gives you a real nice, with the white and the red, ready pink, it gives you a nice texture. Brilliant for fussy cutting. I mean, the, um, I love the ball of twine with the scissors. That, if you fussy cut that, it's just a lovely thing, isn't it? So you could cut round the edge of these, press some bonder web to the back, applique them onto things. You know, if you were just making something as simple as a small purse or a small zip purse, you could applique one of these twined onto the front of it. That's just lovely. Even the lettering is nice. Hi you, a day like this. You could just cut out the lettering. So it's very multi-purpose. And the colour is that, it really is strawberry. It's a soft strawberry, ready pinky colour. But I like the sort of the white hand-drawn um, graphic look of it. So you can also get this fabric in a different colourway. You can get it in the grey colourway. This is very, it feels almost Scandi, doesn't it? Very contemporary home. I mean, the colour, obviously, because it's a bundle and this is a, because it's a fabric collection, obviously the pink and the grey team beautifully together. The grey is very subtle. The, the pinky red really pops out of it. So this is called Riley Brake Idyllic Motifs in Grey. Exactly the same print as the strawberry coloured one. All the same all the same motifs, but with this really soft, like Scandi grey colour. But it works really well with um, any pastel solids because grey is one of those real go-to colours. And I think by having all the writing on it, it just lifts it, it gives it a bit of texture, it gives it a bit more of a three-dimensional quality to it. And you can use all the little pieces. So maybe you were doing some, you know, EPP, you could cut out just the words, even, you know, the high word. It's really nice to have odd half metres around of fabrics like this in your collection when, when you want, because you can use it. I mean, I like the little bit that says a day like this. Can we see that? Um, blah, blah, there. See, a day like this. You could just, you could have that in a little hexy just cut out in the middle of everything else a day like this. Or you could just cut it out and sew it to a car, piece of card and then fold it in half and there's a card. It's just a really lovely sentiment or hi you. But I, that's what I like about these fabrics. Although you often think, oh, well, I've got to use this fabric. What shall I make from the whole thing? But it, use elements of it, use small pieces. I always have a, because I have sorted my fabric out lately and I've got piles of like pinks and blues and reds but I have got a pile of ri written so fabrics that have got writing on because I use them a lot for that sort of thing or maybe I just want to line something if you want something a bit interesting if you make a zip pocket inside a bag and you want to line it it's quite often nice to do the bind to do line it with this I also find that binding things with writing on is really nice because words pop up so you join together lots and lots of strips, bind the edge of your quilt or your cushion or your bag. And every now and then along, along just by accident, the words pop out. So it just, because it's just more interesting. Yes, you could bind in a pale grey, but binding in grey with words and prints like this is just more interesting. So I do have a section, all different colours, but it's fabrics with writing on, because I really like them. So at the moment, the raspberry, is it called raspberry? So I'd say... Uh, well, it's called raspberry, but I think it's more strawberry colour. But they are level. People like raspberry, or which is actually strawberry colour. I think raspberry is a deeper colour than that. Um, and the grey as well. Now, we've also got the same print in yellow. This is Dijon mustard, isn't it? Or is it more of, no, because it's not as dark as that. It's American mustard. It's the sort of mustard you put on a burger. It's that yellow, isn't it? That really sort of bright yellow. Or a primrose, if you don't want to be thinking about mustard and burgers. It's primrose yellow. But it makes the print look very different, doesn't it? Depending on the background. So if I put the grey next to it, with the grey, the print comes out and the grey recedes. With the yellow, they're sort of level level qualities of tone but if we then put the red the red which is called raspberry but it's actually strawberry um that's much brighter but look how beautifully those three colors go together instant it is very sort of yeah high-end boutique glyph shop i think it's supposed to be like a 
a florist, but they are lovely together. I mean, you could create, if you wanted to create something simple, patchwork cushion or a bag, those three colours go together beautifully. But any two of them go together. The yellow and the grey are lovely together, aren't they? The red and the grey are really nice together. And the red and the yellow, in a completely different look. But there's just, because you know that they're chosen from the same colour palette, They've been selected that they do blend together. You know if you put them together, they'll go really well. So it just depends which one you like the best or buy all three. Whatever your thing is. But it's just one of those fabrics. I was, I'm, I think I'm always drawn to fabrics with writing on. I don't know why. And then my favourite one, I've got one that's a white fabric and it's printed on. It just says, eat it all. I love that. And you know what? I've never used it because I love it so much. I don't cut into it and use it, which is ridiculous. So I have a meat of fabric that says, eat it all. One day. <gasps> Should we do the, st the stripe fabrics now? Now, these are probably going to make your eyes go mad. This will give you a little health warning. So this is, is this one coral? Yes. So this is the same colour background as the... Um, as the raspberry. Remember now, this what I like about this is the stripe goes diagonally. Whoa. So really good for lining, just something slightly different. It looks like you've cut on the bias, but do you know what? If you want to cut on the bias, you don't have to think about how to do it. You just cut along the lines. And you could you could get, you could cut along the bias, but get straight stripes, which you don't often get, do you? But I just think this is just a really nice way. You don't often see stripes that go diagonally across fabric. And in order to get that normally, you'd have to cut diagonally, which is when you're messing with the bias. But um, this is really good for, well, for putting, obviously, in quilting. You know, it's a great low volume. It's a lovely way. Ins instead of using um, big print, well, a, a, if you have um, large prints, if you team a low volume print, which means a very small pattern or a stripe or something like that, with it, it, it creates a difference in pace because you, the low volume just sits below and then it makes the large fabrics pop out more. But this is just a really good fabric to put in your stash as well. I mean, it go, obviously goes together with the collection really well, but you don't often see a diagonal stripe and they are really useful because you can play with it. So you can cut it, you could cut squares of it and then join them, turn them round and then the stripes will be going one way, then the other way. Lots of messing. So this is also available in the yellow, but you see what I mean? If you put the stripes going one way and then the other way, just by turning it round. And normally the only way to get diagonal stripes is to cut the fabric on the bias. And then it makes it really hard to work for because it all stretches in all sorts of ways. So it's just a really, really useful. So you can get this in the coral. I'm not sure why that was. I guess it's called coral because it is a slightly, let me show you if you wanted to buy the whole collection. It is a slightly lighter version of this um, raspberry that I think it looks like a strawberry. So this is available in coral. It is also available in yellow oh this one's called yellow no oh that's funny isn't it so the one that i called mustard is called yellow and this one is called mustard well it is a bit deeper than that one so look this the stripes on this are a little bit deeper than that but it is i mean these two colors together they look lovely don't they and again it's that diagonal stripe and if you wanted straight stripes cut on the bias, this is the only way you're going to get it because you could cut them on the bias. So if you wanted to bind something with straight stripes but cut them on the bias, because if you cut diagonally, then they'll be straight. It's the only way you'll do it. So that's a really useful for, pe for binding curves with straight lines. It's the only way you would do it. And then we've also got the third colourway, which is called, called, it's coming up. It's called navy. So it has a navy stripe and then the background is a very, very pale pink. It's not white, it's a very pale pink. But those three colours look lovely together, don't they? 
And again, you can mess around with the stripes. You can turn them round so they can go different ways. But you can, you know, they, they work really well in this collection, obviously, because it is a colour palette. All the colours used in this collection are in here as well. But you could just buy these and they would go together with lots of other fabric. You know, anything in navy, anything in yellow, anything in red, those three fabrics will go together. And it is very rare that you will find a striped fabric that is printed diagonally. So you can get some really interesting effects. Simple cut squares and join them together. You know, you get the diagonals, then you can move the diagonals whichever way you want. And you get some really interesting effects without a lot of effort, to be honest. You haven't really got to think too much about it, which is always, always useful. But it's always nice when you cut things out simply and people think it looks clever. I do like the selvage as well. Let me just highlight the selvage because selvages are important. There's the little spool of um, twine with the scissors in it that's on the, I cut all my selvages off. I'm going to just show you that in the middle. One day, one day. So there is the, um, there's the spool and that's the same thing on the selvage. So what I do before I cut my fabrics, I always cut the selvage off and I allow sort of half an inch either side and I cut it all the way down the length. And then I roll them all up and I put them in a big jar and then I make things with them. So what you can do is you can just lay them flat onto, a, say you wanted to make um, a zip purse, lay them, cut that fabric out bigger than you need, a little bit bigger, lie the selvage on top and then put another one on top and keep sewing them together. I've been saving them lately. I'd like to make an office seat cover. I saw a picture on Pinterest of it. But I've made lots of different things with selvages because they've always got lovely writing on them. Or I often use them within my patchwork as well. So if you were making, if you bought the whole bundle of these Riley Blakes and you were making something with them, cut the selvages off and use them, sew them on top. They just, they just add that really extra thing. And I think often, they, the designers go to quite a bit of effort to put nice things on their selvages. And like that, you know, because it's it looks lovely. It's got a Minky Kim's name on it. They've even used different fonts and they've finished it off. And it's just, it's just a nice thing. But you can use them for so many things. I've made whole notebook covers before with layers and layers of selvage covers. It's just a simple book cover for an A5 notebook. And they look stunning. So it seems a shame to just waste them because you obviously don't use them when you're sewing so I just have one of those big glass jars with a rubbery top and I keep all my selvages in there so let's we've done those now so we're going to do the big flowers so these are your they're not even called high volume they're just the large prints so this is coral now look at the selvage of this one how nice is that? So it's got all the little spools in all the colourways because normally on a selvage you just get blobs but they've put the, the twine spool with the scissors in it. You know, you can tell that's what shows you the quality. You can always tell quality by a selvage, actually. But that's lovely, isn't it? So cut that off and use it for something because it's so nice. So this, um, obviously, it drapes really well because it's a quality fabric. This one's a little bit creased. Nice um, coral, corally pink background with these really large blooms featuring, you know, the, obviously the white of the bloom, but it's that hand etched drawn look which is mimicked in the, um, the fabric with all the scissors, the scissors. So with this fabric here, you've got all of this etching and that is echoed in here where this is all hand drawn, very detailed. And it features pale mint and turquoise and that lovely mustard yellow that's in the striped fabric. It's got the, um, the sort of the deep, the darker gray brown color in the leaves. It's very classy. And then here and there, there's a pop of really bright fuchsia pink. So again, you could use this for loads of things. This would look really beautiful embroidered. You'd only need a small square of it. 
And if you embroidered just the features on here, maybe you just embroidered the veins of the leaves or you did a bit of satin stitch over here or the scent of that flower, you could fill with those sort of chocolate brown French knots. Suddenly it becomes a bigger thing. It becomes more embellished. Also, if you press bond web to the back of it, cut round the flower, that's an applique piece. You could just put that, applique that to the centre of a piece of just like a natural linen, frame it and you've got a beautiful piece of art. And, you know, with half a metre, you've got loads of them. So you could embroider it first, then applique it to a piece of fabric, and then you've got, and then just frame it. I think we often forget that actually some of this fabric is so lovely, it just stands on its own. You don't need to make it any into anything. You can pay an absolute fortune for framed fabric just because somebody else has framed it. You can buy quite cheaply those um, stretcher frames, canvas ones, where all you do is you stretch the fabric all the way round and then you can, using a staple gun or double-sided tape, you can tape it to it and then you've got, and then you can, um, you've got wall art, which if you went to buy it would cost a fortune. But that's when you're using a little piece like this, where it really is worth doing the, um, to embroider parts of it. You don't even need to embroider all of it. You could use like a charcoal grey stranded cotton and just backstitch around the edges. And suddenly what it does is it brings that up. It gives it a 3D quality, really brings life into it. And it's worth it. I think when you've got a fabric like this that's beautifully designed, it's worth making the most of it. Now this fabric is also available in two other colourways. So we've got this one, which is the navy one which I have to say is a very, very dark navy. It's almost black. <laughs> yeah, it is. Um, this is just, doesn't it? It looks very different on this dark navy, doesn't it? It's very classy. Wouldn't that look fun? Yeah, I mean, I would, I'm thinking makeup bag, cosmetic bag, or even like an evening bag, because it really is quite... Yeah, it's quite classy, isn't it? And and I do like the all the different colour. I love the um the blue that's in here. That's really lovely. And honestly, you know, whatever you were making with it, think about embroidering in it or repliquing it. It's you know, if you use maybe three quarters of this because you're going to line something with it, or you're going to make a pillowcase with it, make a really nice pillowcase. The little bit that you've cut off, which might be just you know, this small sprig of flowers on the edge, keep that because that would make a lovely piece of applique, but it would make a fantastic pillowcase, wouldn't it? So half a metre would be enough for one side of your pillowcase. And then, well, obviously if you bought a metre, that's both sides, but you could just use a plain fabric for the back of it. And suddenly it's very stunning on a bed but you could, you know, put piping around the outside. So maybe you've even, if you've got like a pale pink or just a white cotton duvet cover, this is a pillowcase. Suddenly it updates it or, a, you know, a, a whole new, gives it almost looks like you've got a whole new bedding or for some maybe occasional cushions that are, are on your bed. This is very stunning, isn't it? And then if you're doing something like a cushion where you've probably only got maybe six of these large flowers, then it's worth spending the time to put a bit of embroidery on it. Or what you can do is you can cut, if you're not using all of it, you can cut one of the flowers and applique it on top of another flower and it gives it like that 3D quality. You know, fabric isn't just for sort of cutting and sewing back together into something else. There is so much more that you can do with it. Um, we've also got this fabric in the cream background, which is a very pale, I would say it's it's not cream like like um, rich clotted cream. It's very pale, more like an ivory. So it's not your really sort of yellowy cream. It's a very fresh, crisp. But this is this is very guest bedroom, isn't it? Yeah, it's really lovely. But I think it also it would make a really lovely set. Say you wanted to make somebody. Um, a wash bag and a makeup bag for Christmas, or you wanted to make a pair of short pajamas. This is perfect for it. There's so many lovely patterns because short pajamas are really easy to make. Or what you could do is you could um, make the short pajama shorts and then buy a t-shirt in one of these colours to go with it. 
What a lovely present. Then make a little drawstring bag. You could even buy, you know, if you've got the whole bundle, you can start playing with the fabrics and mix and match it. So you could make a drawstring bag in one of the prints. You could make the pyjama shorts in here. You could pipe the bag with other colours. There's a lot that you can do with this. You could embroider the name on them. You know, this is a beautiful fabric. It's not something that you'd want to waste anything of. I love this small sprig here. But if you were going to put it in your guest bedroom, you know, you can make a couple of pillowcases, frame a bit, put that on the wall. There's just a lot you can do with it. You can even cover photo frames with it. That always looks really effective. Cover your coat hangers with it. Nice padding went or, you know, if you wanted to put a pin board, maybe in the kitchen, because this is very sort of like, it feels almost a bit cottagey garden. You could put this in the kitchen, cover a pin board with it. It's lovely. You know, don't always think about it, it has to be patchwork or quilting. There's so many other things, but dressmaking too, make a beautiful summer dress. But, you know, with all of these fabrics, when you look at the back of a dress pattern, it always lists the width of the fabric and how much you need to buy. So you can always work it out because although this is narrower than a normal dressmaking fabric, it will always tell you how much you need to buy. So that's the sort of, it's called cream, but it isn't your yellowy cream. It is a very pale cream. It's more of your skim milk rather than your full fat milk. So that comes in those three. I'm going to put them together because then you can see them better. There's the three colourways. So the last three in this range, what is this one called? Right, this is called Idyllic Squares. And this one is in yellow, not mustard. This one is yellow. So the little, so it's got like a running stitch white square and then another square inside it of, that's running stitch and then little coloured dots all the way around the edge that is um, just tiny little blobs of all of the other colours that are in the range. You can see it on the um, close up now. You see all the, can you see the, um, the running stitch squares and then all the li other little blobs of colour? But that's to be able to get that detail in such a small print shows you the quality of the fabric in the printing. It's also got quite a nice selvage. Again, all the colours that are used in it. That's, you see, like that. Look how nice that'll look on your covered notebook when you've joined them all together. And you just overlap one over the other and then you top stitch and overlap the other one. And because they don't fray, because you use the selvage, selvage. That's how it works. It's just... Yeah, if you were making, even like you'd say you were making soft toys and you know you only want sort of a feature fabric or you're making clothes for soft toys, this is ideal. You could make it the little sort of rabbit's paws or the teddy boy's paws and something like this because this is the low volume part of the range. But it is very clever, so it goes really well. Obviously, it goes really well with this because they're the same colours, but it's got all of the other colours, so it's got the pink and the green. So... If so if we put that together, that looks really nice now. But it actually, yeah, these two, they obviously blend, but if you take that one away, and it's just, it's, it's just one of those fabrics that we're, instead of using a plane, if you use a print like this, it just gives it a little bit more interest. Even if you're only using it to bind something, it's a bit more interesting. If you want to put a pocket in a skirt or a dress, don't use a plain fabric. Use something like this with a bit of a print. Now, if I show you the, um, this also comes in cream, which is not, um, not cream, like rich cream, but it's a whiter cream. The actual print, which is exactly the same, actually shows up a lot better. So it's got like um, deep orange running stitch squares, and then it's got the little coloured dots all the way around. And it's what's nice about it, it's not big, it's not all the same size dots. They're almost like hand-drawn little blobs and dots. And But look, um, that's my finger. Look, see, show you how small it is to scale. But, you know, anything, even, say, for your sewing room, because it's got this running stitch edge, this would make a brilliant, just a little pincushion or a sewing machine cover. Or, you know, if you want to make fabric baskets, 
this is ideal because it's just a lovely lovely print and you could use the the yellow for the outside or the cream for the inside but it also comes in pink so there we go so wouldn't that be lovely if you wanted to make some fabric um, storage baskets if you bought some styleville or some foam interfacing to go between the two that would make them stand up or a really heavy weight wadding but you put the two together or even three of them and bind them in that storage baskets for anywhere in the guest room the guest room but they're lovely aren't they they're very soft colors really nice I, I, I think I like the I like this pink I think the pink is a lovely color and it goes beautifully with the floral the large floral I think that goes with all of them because the yellow in this what looks like a lemon is the same as the yellow in there and these pinks are the same as this pink and then the blue that you've got in the leaf is echoed in the blue um, dots around the edges that are in all of these three so those go together really well so if you buy the whole bundle you haven't got to think about which ones to have so there's 7.99 for half a meter individually but if you buy the mega bundle and you use your 20 pounds off so that takes it down to 75.49 then the fabrics actually cost just a tad more than six pounds a half meter so if you buy the mega bundle and you use your 20 pounds off and why wouldn't you use your 20 pounds off then you save so much and the fabric rather than 7.99 a meter is just over six pounds so shall we put it all together now since I've separated it, it's all it's all on its own now. What I am going to try and do is fold them back up in the way they were, but it's almost impossible. Now, we have only got 10 mega bundles available. There's quite a lot of them in people's baskets, and obviously people aren't checking out yet because you want to save, because, you know, you can only... You can only um, check out once. You can't keep doing it, otherwise you don't get the, the offer. Um, but obviously with this mega bundle, it qualifies immediately. You don't have to put anything else in your basket. You immediately get the £20 off. Because these are these were all folded when I started exactly the same. And they look really nice. I think I might lay them like this because I can't do it otherwise. I don't think I can replicate what Hannah did. Okay, so yeah, so I'm just going to put the range back together so that you can see it. Not quite in the way it was because I just don't think I'm very good at folding fabric. It was when I got it, it was all the same size, and now it's all different sizes, and it was in a circle as well. But you know what? How nice does that look? Okay, it doesn't look as nice as it did when it was in a circle. But it's still a lovely mega bundle all the same. Yeah. Once you unpack it, maybe you can make yours look nicer than mine. But you know when you buy this, bun this mega bundle that it all goes together. All the colours are in the same colour palette. Whatever you make from this, it will all go together beautifully. I know, and you'll and you'll find other things. You'll think, oh, that goes with it, and that goes with that, and what can I make? And there's nothing like a big bundle of new fabric to inspire you to make something glorious. I know they always say pre-wash your fabric, but I hate pre-washing fabric because it doesn't smell as nice, does it? I love the smell of brand new fabric and the feel of it. It's really lovely, but there's a lot you can do with this. Now, I have got three other fabrics which aren't in this range, but they actually work quite well with it. Now, I love this green one. So this is, this, well, there's no, it's not Riley Blake. It's um, from Stoff. Now, oh, look at this. Should we have a little salvage check? Look at the salvage on that. Look, they're little plants, but in all the colourways. I like, now I definitely, definitely cut that one off. So this one is by Stoff and 
I like stuff fabrics because they're very smooth. I don't know what they do to them, but they're very soft and they're very smooth. Now it's got all little gardening things. So you've got little like running stitch lines and then in each little square there's gardening things. So there's a, a house and a wreath and toadstools and a fork, a rabbit, obviously, because that's eating the lettuce, little plants and little seedlings. So you can use this. Now this goes really well with this bundle, doesn't it? The colours actually go beautifully and it's a very it's a completely different fabric different range but the colors go really well and it blends so it's worth if you've bought any of the half meters of the riley blake this goes well with it um it's one of those really nice fabrics that's got all these different squares so you can actually just cut along the squares and use it for small pieces or you can cut a quarter of an inch outside of it and then you can sew them all together so it's lovely as it is but it is really a multi-use fabric perfect for embroidery because it is just outlines so you could stitch over these outlines if you wanted to just cover a small book and give it to somebody as a gift embroider over all of these and it's so easy to embroider when all the lines are drawn on it says grow and cultivate i don't know whether i'd add this to my written words fabric collection or not but um you know, if you're thinking about gifts for people for their hobbies, you know, this is ideal for someone that you know who loves gardening. You can make them a gardening bag or a gardening apron or a kneeler or um, a something to keep all their seeds in. But it's, it's a really lovely, it is a sort of a sage green. But it's only 4 99 for half a metre. Make a nice peg bag, wouldn't it? But actually, I mean, although it's gardening, you make a nice gardening apron with that. Remember, it has got a good selvage. Remember, and I do judge fabrics on their selvages. Don't like to judge, but you could, oh, that's got a lovely selvage, hasn't it? So that's the, this is the same fabric, but in, what's it called? It isn't turquoise at all. It's more, it's just, I'm sorry, it just isn't. This is a very dusty denim. It's a denim blue, I think, but a, a dull denim. A dull, du you know, but no, a soft, a soft denim. And then the colours on it are sort of a coral and a soft orange and a mustard yellow. And I, if anything's a turquoise, that's a turquoise. And then the lines are white, but it is a very soft denim colour. It isn't turquoise. Because I think of turquoise as being a really bright colour, like we had in the bundle in that the last hour this is more of a, a denim -y color and it's also available in what's this color called pink yeah it's called black now i'll get i'll let them have that again it comes with a lovely salvage this looks a bit like a blackboard doesn't it because the, li the white lines on it look like they're drawn in chalk. And actually, you know how you can get chalks in different colours and sort of reds and stuff? It is the soft colours that you'd get with chalks. So this would be really good for um, anything to do with children. Because it does have that sort of school feel to it. It'd be nice to make their um, PE bag in. Or a little lunch bag. Because it is, although it is a gardening thing, and it, because it's got all the words on, and it does feel very much chalky, but it would be nice for a lunch bag or a, or a well, I call them dat bags. So that's because I come from, well, I come from the West Country. We Did you not have daps in school? You see, you don't have these in Birmingham. I think you call them pumps up here. Those shoes that you wear for your PE. Plimsolls. You call them plimsolls. Well, I call them daps from Somerset. We have a dat bag. And that's what you put your daps in. Mm. That would be a great dap bag, pimp sole bag or pump bag, depending on where you live. And I don't know whether anyone else has got any other name for it. But those, those black things with elastic over the top of them that you wear for PE, that's your daps. But this is a really, it's a lovely fabric, isn't it? But you could, e you, know, you could even use it for clothing as well. Make a lovely little girl's dress. A pair of shorts. But... I think actually all three colours, they've all obviously, which is always the same when you have a fabric collection, don't you? They design them so that the colour so that they go together. So that the colour that you've got in this green is echoed in the other fabrics as well. I need to pull them down a bit so you can see all three together. I think 
The green is my favourite though. I think, yeah, maybe because it goes with the Riley Blake range and also it really is a lovely soft sage green. But I do like the blackboard effect because it really makes, it does make really look like um, chalks because when you buy coloured chalks, they're that colour. Just fold it up. But quite often, you know, when you, um, if you've got children, they're doing forest school, because a lot of them do it now, and you have to bring in special clothes and you have to have a change of clothes. It'd be great for something like that, for a bag to put them in. Mm. I would like to have done forest school. We were just told to go out and play in the park. <laughs> play in the road and don't be back till tea time. There was none of that forest school. It was like, yeah, go and play in the road and don't come back till tea time and definitely don't bring your friends home with you. <laughs> none of that play date business. <laughs> Different generation. Right, shall we? I was going to say, can we do autumn leaves next? This is a nether stoff fabric, and I like stoff fabric because it's very soft. It's the quilting weight cotton. It's your normal 44 inches, 112 centimetres wide, um, but it's soft. If it almost feel, and it isn't, it isn't brushed cotton. I'll say it now, it is not brushed cotton, but it has a very soft feel to it. So it's very nice for nightwear. Very nice for nightwear. Loungewear. Very nice for a pair of pyjamas, dressing gown or general lounging. Um, it's also, it's got quite a nice selvage. Important. It's got leaves. So for each colour, instead of blobs, because that's boring and uninspired, this has got leaves for its selvage. And this has got a very um, deep cream background and it features sort of burgundy, but shades of light, medium and dark burgundy. Look, there they go, there's my finger. That shows you what the scale of it. Very low volume print, perfect to team with a plain. There are three different plain colours in there. You can mix it with those. So it, if you want to use a plain colour, you could use this instead because from a distance, it just feels like you've got a lot of colour, a lot of burgundy going on. But, you know, it'd be brilliant for... Um, if, you make, if you're doing doll making, dolls' dresses, because it is that very small scale, or dolls' pyjamas, just a little bit. But it is a very small scale, so if you want a small scale print, it's ideal for that. And what's even better, we have it in four colourways. So this colourway is called cream, which means the background is cream, but it is actually burgundy. I think I should go and work for these companies. Um, as colour naming and then I could be a sell a salvage consultant as well and say mm, I just don't think you're salvage you've really thought this through this one is called black right and that will be because the leaves are black again it's got a nice triple leaf salvage because What's useful, I know I'm laughing about selvages, what is useful about a selvage is that you can see what colours are used in it. So it picks the colours out and it puts them there. So you can see that there are three tones. So if you're ever using a fabric that does have a decent selvage and you want to match it to planes or something, you can pick those out along there. So you might look at this thing, oh, I'm not sure is there how many shades are in there and what are the shades? Because they're picked out at the bottom. It makes it a lot easier to see. So this one is called black but it has exactly the same cream background as the burgundy one that I just showed you. But this features light grey, medium grey and black. So again, it's a very, very small print. So it's perfect for small scale work like EPP, or if you want just a small print, if you want to bind something, it's very good for that. Um, Bridget's got a question. Can we still use Facebook 10? Yes, where have you been, Bridget? Been talking about that all morning. Yes, of course you can. If you spend 50 pounds or more, use Facebook 10, you get 10 pounds off. And remember, due to the very weird complexities of our system, everything has to be in the basket and you check out at once. So make sure that your basket adds up to 50 pounds or more, and then you can check out. Now, remember that if you spend £80 or more, 
you get £20 off if you use the code Facebook20. Now, this Riley Bay Mega Bundle, which has six metres of fabric, so there's 12 different fabrics, half a metre of each. Um, we've only got four of these left, but you immediately apply. So, although it's £95.49, because you get the £20 off, it's actually £75.49, which means that a half a metre fabric that's normally £7.99 a metre actually comes in at, at just over £6 a, metre, a half a metre. I mean, we don't normally get a discount on a fabric. Look, that looks a bit better, doesn't it? Look. Brand new designer fabric, and it's, we are offering a discount. So it's normally, if you want to buy these separately, they are seven ninety nine a meter, but you can buy them with the special offer, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. It's just over six pounds a meter. Woo! So shall we? Shall we move on to the nice panel that I like? So the autumn leaves is available in four colorways. Just saying. But they are, they will be underneath. But if you want to see them, they are available if you wanted to buy all of them. No, they are available in five colourways. And that one is my favourite because I've got a dress in that colour. Just saying. Michael Miller. Now, I'm going to show you the panel first. This is very Monet, isn't it? Very Monet. Monet, isn't it? Well, it's very watercolour. So... It features, look at that. Can you see? Do I need to pull it down a bit? It is a beautiful vase of lilacs, I think. I'm not very good at flowers, but I think that they all budly. No, I think they're lilacs. So it's got blue ones and purple ones and white ones in a lovely vase. And then the background, it is very watercolour, isn't it? But... What is amazing about a panel is that you can, they're, they're done, they're there immediately. Now I want to show you the bottom of this panel. So you've got a border, there we go, sorry. You've got a border all the way round, but then you've also got like a frame around that and then the cutting lines either side, so that doesn't interfere. You've still got like a quarter of an inch either side of this border and then you've got a border along the bottom. So you can make it bigger. So you can cut around the inner border or the outer border. You can just then just get some backing fabric, some wadding and quilt it. And it is a beautiful piece of wall art. And then you've got the border along the bottom that you can use maybe for the hanging loops at the top. You can cut out just part of it. You don't have to use the whole thing. But this is really good if you want to have a go at quilting. You can quilt, if you want to try some free motion quilting, this is perfect for it. You could quilt just around the edges of the flowers or you could quilt a repeat pattern over the whole thing. But it is really stunning. So it is, if I had a tape measure, I don't think I've got a tape measure. So it's 60 centimetres wide from this width. But it is lovely, isn't it? But the great thing is, is that there are th four other fabrics in this range. So that if you wanted to make something, maybe what you can do with this is make this the centre of your quilt. So you buy this, this goes in the centre, and then you piece fabrics or blocks or squares or whatever you want all the way around the outside. So we have other fabrics that go with it that echo that print. So there's this beautiful... I mean, that is fantastic, isn't it? I absolutely love that. Really, really lovely. So it's like sort of purple pansies, but that's great for bag making, isn't it? If you want a really pretty bag. But that, obviously, is the same colourways that's in this. Then we've got the same print, but it's slightly smaller scale. Now, we are, we are limited on this. So if you want it, this one's called Packed Petals. But again, it, it fits in beautifully with the colours. That's why I'm laying them all out. We've then got the same one in a stripe. I mean, it, it really is very sort of that impressionist look. Love the colours in that. It's, um, if I go down, it, the stripes run down the selvage. Just saying, poor sell. Not impressed with the selvages though. 
No colour blobs, just words. No colour blobs on there. It's got the names on, staggered stripe. I love this because the stripes go down and it's shades of purple and green and it is very watercolour, but don't they go together well so that you've got this big floral? Then you've got a stripe and a little floral. And then finally, you've got a spot which is in the sort of the movie colour of all of them. Movie colour. So I'm going to just fold them up so you can see what they look like together better. That one is called, Re the big flowers is called Regal Roses. The spot one is called Monotone Dot. Although I will give them there for their selvage, they have actually labelled, because not fabrics don't always label the selvages, which is annoying, because then you don't know what they're called. So they can have that. But just think how nice the dots could have been on here. So if I just want to, fold these up so you can see what they look together because for a quilt that would be absolutely stunning with the centre panel as well but really you know very very pretty pretty makes very bedroom but they are really you know actually I think these would go very well in anyone's living room because they are those lovely mauve green deep blue colours this one Oh, sorry, that's sold out. I'll put that there. You can't have that. That's mine. And then there's the... Um, oh, you can't have that one. The sticker's fallen off. Right, so there's the panel. But then if I lay these on top, you can see how well they go together. So finally, 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 aren't they lovely? Um, I just want to recap on the Riley Blake Me Mega Bundle because it is brand new today. Star of the show, brand new. You get one two, I'm going to show you them all, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, I'm really good at counting, ten, eleven, twelve, all in coordinating colours and prints with Minky Kim's very signature nostalgic hand etched um, detail and it's our attention to very very small detail that's really useful now use your code it's 20 pounds off when you spend 80 pounds or more and obviously because this is 95 pounds and 49 pence then you will immediately qualify for your 20 pounds off so it comes in at 75 pound 49 remember it's got to be in your basket everything but, you know, for a brand new fabric range to get this size of discount, we wouldn't normally do that. But £20 off when you spend £20. Yeah, that should have been an exemption. We shouldn't have put that in today. Anyway, mad, madness for a brand new fabric range, but make the most of it. So we will see you in just a few minutes for Sally Ann um, back with us. Whether you are a knitting newbie or a career crocheter, Mariner Yarns is passionate about its yarns and products to keep you creating what you love at outstanding value. As part of the yarn loving community, their aim is to provide you with quality products that you need. They know the importance of being able to find the perfect yarn that you would love to work with again and again, fitting perfectly within your wool stash. They produce a stunning range of traditional and contemporary yarns in a choice of popular weights with patterns too to cover all of your knitting and crochet needs. Yarn Lane has been working with Mariner to create exclusive kits using their yarn and patterns in choice of styles, colours and yarns. Hello, I'm Catherine Wright. I'm from Leicestershire Craft Centre, which is based in Market Harborough. I love all kinds of sewing, but probably my favourite thing to do is dressmaking. Um, but I also teach patchwork and free motion embroidery and anything to do with textiles, really. I love to have a go at felting and crochet and knitting and, oh, you name it, I'll have a go at it. Uh, so I started sewing when I was seven. My mum taught me to sew and the very first thing I made was an apron. But I'm a terribly impatient person. I always just want to get on with the project. So I uh, didn't wait for her to help me cut it out and I cut it out myself and I didn't know you had to have a seam allowance. So I made the world's smallest apron and my mum still has it somewhere. Um, 
So uh, sewing tips, I would say, I teach a lot of people to sew, especially beginners, and I would say, don't get disheartened. Take your um, learning journey slowly. Don't expect to suddenly make a ball gown or suddenly make a king size quilt. Build up your skills, um, you know, slowly. Um, and I would also say the iron is your friend. Use your iron a lot. It makes your sewing look so much better. It helps you get things in place where you want it before you sew and is a really handy thing to have. If you'd like to get in touch with us during our live show and send in any messages or any questions, then you can do it on studio at sewingstreet.com. Alternatively, you can message us on our official Facebook page. Hello everyone, my name is Cara Ackerman and I'm absolutely delighted to be here at Sewing Street. Um, I actually originated from Hertfordshire, then went down to Hampshire and then it ended up in the East Midlands. I've been in the East Midlands for about 40 years now, which seems crazy. Um, but 36 of those I actually worked with DMC Creative World, um, which was wonderful. I really, really enjoyed that. And then um, I decided to go freelance and that's how I got introduced to Sewing Street. I love doing anything to do with um, textiles. So embroidery, cross stitch, patchwork, done a bit of quilting, bag making, toy making. Oh goodness, there's loads and loads of things. Um, what I love doing is just trying something new. And I think one of the tips is don't be frightened of trying something new. Um, you always learn from it. And you know, don't be scared of making mistakes either. We all learn from the mistakes that we make. Um, little bit about me that you might not know and that's a bit of a surprise. Um, I once went to the garden party down at Buckingham Palace, the Queen's Garden Party, for some work that I did with Marie Curie. And I was so, so lucky to go there and just a wonderful time. Um, so I hope to see more of you on Sewing Street and I hope to try lots of new crafts with you. So see you again soon. Bye bye. While we're having to spend more time at home again, we're here to keep you busy and entertained. Sewing Street will be live every day from 8am, bringing you plenty of demonstrations with our experts in dressmaking, quilting, bag making, toy making, needle felting, embroidery and so much more. Our community of fellow sewists on the Sewing Street Fans Facebook group are there to chat to you about whatever you're making, sharing photos and advice. Check out the Sewing Street Facebook and Instagram pages for fun competitions and offers. Watch Sewing Street on Freeview 74, Sky 670 or our YouTube channel and search Sewing Street TV to find us on social media. Hello and welcome back to Sewing Street. We are on a Creative Grids Hour. Um, so if you haven't used Creative Grids before, they're rulers, really. They're rulers, but fancy rulers. Rulers that do very specific jobs very easily and make your life easy. So yes, you can just have one ruler for your rotary cutter when using with your cutting mat that just cuts strips. But the rule, the, there are loads and loads of rulers that create a grids and people absolutely love them once they realise what they do and what you can do. And they just make your life easier and make your patchwork easier. So the first one we're going to talk about is the non-slip scrap crazy, eight inch. So it comes in a bag and there are three. Oh, and they're all joined together. Don't open that. I'm not allowed to open it. Sally Ann has got the open versions, so I'll keep mine closed. But look, there were three. They're different shapes and sizes. In the bag as well is a little instruction sheet. So basically, you can make an eight inch block. So you know how in Victorian times, um, should I move the triangle rule out short? Um, in Victorian times, these crazy patchwork was really popular and they often used to do it in velvet and then do um, embroidery stitch over the top of it like cross stitch and blanket stitch that was really popular and this is the whole the similar version but it's a more of a planned scrap crazy so there were three templates in it for different shapes and you can then cut out all different shapes and join them together so it looks like you've done the crazy quilting and look at this beautiful one that Sally Ann has made for us 
using the Scrap Crazy quilt. That's fantastic. So you can make a small block just to, well, this, these three rulers will make an eight inch finished block or you can join them all together to make a whole quilt, which looks fantastic. But it just, it's, it's a very easy way of you cutting out from your stash, smaller pieces of fabric, join them all together. And the instructions show you, there's a layout of where to cut them and how to cut them, and then how to join them back together. So obviously Sally Ann's gonna show us how to use them, but there is a little instruction booklet in with the three rulers that you get. That Sally Ann will show you separately, but mine are joined together. There's three. So that's the scrap crazy. We're also going to be showing you the 45 inch double strip kaleidoscope ruler, which looks like a row of houses, doesn't it? Little row of houses, only it's not a row of houses. You can make all sorts of projects with these. So you've got um, a 45 degree kaleidoscope triangle. Um, it's got all the grains on, it's got the 45 degree angles, it's got the seam allowance lines. Um, and remember, all creative grids, the point to them is they have this lovely textured backing. And what's great about this, it's got the textured dots, it just stops it slipping when you put it on the fabric and you're cutting. But they have thought it through, they've put the textured parts on the bits that you need to stay still. So for the triangles, that goes all the way around the edge, because there's nothing worse than when you've got all your fabric laid out and you put your ruler on top and it slips slightly and then you cut wonky. So Sanyan's going to be showing us what you can do with this as well. Now we've also got lots, oh right, sorry wasn't concentrating. So these are the three items. Well, there's lots of different things you can make, but these are the variations of what you can do with those kaleidoscope rulers. So the one on the left is like just scrappy Christmas trees. They're so effective, aren't they? I really like them, very pretty. Um, and then you've got, well, it is, it looks like a kaleidoscope. The one in the middle is like when you sort of twisted it halfway around. And obviously you can join all those blocks together to make a whole quilt. And then the one on the right almost looks like a, one of those sweeties, like a peppermint thing. Yes, yeah, show, and then you can join them all up and this is what they look like. And then the ruler, those, those are the variations of what you can do with that ruler. Just a few things you can do with it. But once you start joining it all up and you make them all, look at that one. It looks like a kaleidoscope, doesn't it? So simply with one small path ruler, which is, you know, just a little thing really, that's what you can create. You can join together all your Christmas trees and make them. That's beautiful, isn't it? That's your real Christmas quilt, isn't it? But think of all the different scraps of fabric that you could use up for that. Any sort of greens and browns and limes, bit of little bit of brown for the trunk. But that can be done with all of this. It's wonderful. So the first thing that we're going to do with Sally Ann is she's um, going to show us how to use the Scrap Crazy Quilt. And she's used the fabrics from this bundle. I really like these. They're real, they're all bright primary colours, but they've got dots on them. So they're not just just solid. They've got a bit more interest. This is very rainbow, isn't it? So you've got red, orange, yellow, green and blue. And because they've got all the coloured dots on, it just gives, gives them a little bit more texture. So they're very fun, great for anything bright if you wanted to create rainbows or anything for children. Maybe you wanted to make a, a quilt for a child or a toddler or, um, you know, a wall hanging for them or a bag or a cushion for their bed or a book bag, something fun. These are brilliant and these are the colours that Sally Ann is using at the moment. So... We've also got, you know, the, um, the other fabric, the other quilts that we showed you, which had um, like the kaleidoscope and the, the pinwheel look, that's using this collection here. So you've got, it's a red and neutral collection. So you've got red, but it's got that lovely mottled background. It's not just your solid red, it's a mottled red. So this bundle has got four half metres of fabric. So you get two metres in total. 22.99 and then you've got the red and then a pale ivory again it's got that mottled background it doesn't show up as well on this but it just gives it a bit of texture and then you've got a beige and then a more goldy color so those are the three the four fabrics that Sally Ann used for the the kaleidoscope one okay 
So that's, those are the ones that we use in the photo, just in case you wanted to see these. So we're going to start off with Sally Ann, and she's going to talk to us to start with to you using the um, Scrap Crazy Quilt. So welcome back. Welcome back. So what did you like about this one? I think it's a fun little quilt. Um, I can imagine making this for like one of your grandkids for Christmas, mm. you know, and it's easy, you know, you just follow the templates, Follow the bright colours, cheery, okay. great to sew. So if you haven't used creative grids before, this is a good one yep. place to start. So it, it actually comes, there's three of them. Ah. <laughs> I can open the packet. You're, yeah, you're allowed to open the packet. Mine's all... Yeah, so there's them. three that you get inside the packet. Mm. And basically you can, you, you can use like a 10 inch square to cut round or you can cut it from strips. So you are looking at... So if you've got like 10 inch charm packs, it'd be yeah. ideal for that. We said a layer cake, didn't we? Yeah. Yeah, that sort of thing. Okay, so basically you're looking at C, two of C. Can you see that there? I don't know. Let's try and hold it so that you can see that. Yeah, they must, they're probably useful two for loads of different things, aren't they, these shapes? Yeah. In fact, they all join together. And then this is the A, B template. So it cuts A, and then in a sh shorter version, it cuts B. Can you see you just do it from the... Oh, yeah. okay. Yeah. It tell you that in the instructions. Yeah. And then this is the D template. There's the block. And as you can see, it shows you how it all goes together. It talks about how you cut them out. And then on the back page, it gives you a little diagram, which, like you said, you could colour in. Yeah, I, I think that's quite a good idea on the back because sometimes you need that, don't you? Because you want to work out before you do it where yep. you're going to put them all. I mean, you could have the blocks all set the same way or you could set, twist them round yeah, to yeah. create different patterns. It's amazing. If you've got like a design wall at home, you just imagine you mm. can put all these up, twist them, move them yeah, around. Yeah, you could get some really unusual looks, couldn't you? You could do. Okay. So yeah, because these are all rotated. You've got one going one way and one. They are all ro they're not all facing the same way. And as you were saying, mm. it's, um, it's evocative of like the Victorian crazy quilt. Yes. So you could add stitching on top of that, couldn't oh, you? Oh, yeah. I mean, there's some gorgeous Victorian mm. quilts out there. But they tend to focus on, like, satins and silks and a bit of, like, velvet. And then the embellishments was, ju was just over the top, wasn't it? You know, real Yeah, but they, they, it was stitches. really sort of beautiful fabrics. I've seen them or seen photos of them made with rich velvet. Yeah. And then they do beautiful stitching on top of them, don't yeah. they? Yeah, I guess it was a way of using up the expensive scraps. Yeah, probably. <laughs> anyway, so once you've cut out your pieces, we'll start to sew them together. It's very straightforward. So, so you just follow the one of the you know the picture on the back to see. Yep. It. I know it actually does say in in the instructions, doesn't it? Yeah. So we're going to start off by okay. sewing. I don't know if I can get all this in the picture. We're going to start off by sewing D to C. So if I was home, I would probably pin, but I'm not going to pin. I'm going to just go for it. Right. I guess the good thing about using the templates is that you know they're all the same size because you've cut round them, yeah. so you know that they're going to fit together. So I'm going to do a bit of chain pieces, piecing as well to make it quicker. If I was at home, I'd probably chain piece the whole thing. Right, OK. So, it won't go quite that far. So chain piecing, basically you're just sewing a few stitches in thin air, then you're putting the next piece in. So what's the benefit of chain piecing? So it helps with your accuracy, and it also means that you use less thread. Oh, uh, true. We're going to iron them as we go, setting the seams. And do you, does it talk to you about pressing them? Oh, it does say press the seam towards the darker fabric. Yeah. Oh, that's quite useful. So does it work out pressing the seams so that they nest? No. Okay. 
But I guess maybe they wouldn't because you've got several joining at the same time. They just talk about pressing to one side to the darker. Yeah. Okay. Press. Same for this one. So you will automatically press to the darker if you have the yeah. darkest one on top. on the bottom of there. And the nice thing about the templates is you can tell about the quarter inch seam. I don't know if you could actually see that. You can see that it's cut so that you your or stitching line comes exactly bang on that apex. Yeah, well, the dotted line, they've got the dotted line yeah. printed on these templates. And actually, what I think is really nice is that printed on the templates, they've got the pattern. So you don't, they've got the arrangement yes. actually on the template. So you can see where your bit goes. So on the D exactly. template, it's got the D one marked in. So it makes it really easy. And having the seam allowance marked with a dotted line as well you can see automatically yeah. and that's where they've got the um the texture bit okay. oh the grip you mean the little yeah things. so the yeah. grip around the edge is outside of that seam allowance but what a useful little piece just a little kit isn't it but they have thought of everything by putting the the shape so when you cut out the d you know where the d is going to go so I'm putting a couple of pins. This is a bit for longer. Because I haven't seen. opened my pack. I don't know what it says on the others, but the one on the <laughs> 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 But on the top, that one D is coloured in. They won't let me open the book. It's so mean. They're so mean. They won't let me open Aww. it. Oh. I know. It's do you know it's because there's one already open. <laughs> and if you keep opening them, then all we have <laughs> is loads and loads of unopened ones. <laughs> This is really quick to do. So if you were doing the whole quill, would you cut it all out at the beginning? Yeah, I would. I'd lay, and it talks in the, in the pattern about layering things up. Yeah. So one of the things that I immediately fell into, the sort of trap, is they talk about layering it up with the right side of the fabric up. Mm. And I had layers of fabric with it up down, up, down. So what you'd end up doing then is creating a reverse block, which isn't um, wrong, Yes, but it is another variant. Yes, yeah, so because you, you can turn them round all, because yeah. basically they make an eight inch finished yeah. block, don't they? So you can do them whichever way round you want. Then you can, and like you say, you can reverse them as well. Yeah. I suppose the only thing with planning ahead is that you don't really want the same colour fabrics touching. No. Unless it's only a little bit of it, but you wouldn't want a long piece. So maybe that's where you do need to plan ahead if you're going to make a whole quilt. Yeah, but so many idea. sewing machines now, you know, you get them and it goes, does 30 decorative stitches. You think, well, I'm never going to use those. But actually, this is the time. This to is get the them time out. Get to them get out. out that stitch. But I've got weird ones that do um, like a man on a bicycle. When am I ever going to use that one? But <laughs> this is the time when you can use those because you just set your machine to stitch either side of the line. Yeah. Once you've joined it all together. So there's one that I made at home, and this is the one I've just made. I just joined two together just to okay. show you how yeah, things so are beginning really to go together. So with a longer seam, especially if I was a beginner, I would pin either end. Yeah, just to make sure it yeah. matches there. Oh, look, Helen's found me the rulers. I'm so excited. <laughs> Thank you so much, producer Hannah, for finding me them. <laughs> now I can see, look how clever that is. They have got all the different bits coloured in. That's great, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> but it's, it's nice that on the rulers, it shows you that that's C and it shows them them coloured in. So you, it's, you're not going to go wrong. No. No, you're not and on the D on. ruler, the D bit's coloured in. So while you're doing it, you can see the arrangement again. OK, um, I've said this millions of times before, but I'm going to say it again mm. as well, because it's good for, be especially if you're a beginner. So okay. I pinned it either end. And can you see, I did one of these blocks at home and one of these blocks on that sewing machine. And there is going to be a slight difference. 
And can you see the bottom one is slightly baggier? Yes. So my adage is you always sew with a baggy bottom. <laughs> Okay. okay, I remember that. <laughs> Always sew with a baggy bottom. Okay. Why is that then? Because the feed on your sewing machine, is that feed on the bottom, those little feed dogs that come yes. up, is much more effective than that presser foot. So whatever goes through on the bottom will go through quicker. So okay. if you've got like that. excess on the bottom, Have it, yes. sew with a baggy mm. bottom and it gets rid of that excess. Wow, that is okay. a brilliant tip. I never knew that. I just <laughs> stretch it. <laughs> I pin it at the one end and the other end, and then maybe in the I middle, and I just stretch <laughs> them so that they go together. Because if you've got one piece that's maybe pieced more, it just needs pulling to, pulling a bit so they go together, if they're supposed to be the same size. Well, yeah. <laughs> I so don't, know, don't know whether I ought to let you get away yeah. with that. Well, if they don't fit, if you just stretch them, then they sort of do fit. <laughs> then they do fit. Because if you've done lots of piecing, the seam sort of pulls it in a bit, doesn't it? <laughs> it does. Mm. Baggy bottom, remember Baggy that? bottom. Baggy bottom. And the other... Th the other um, way of thinking about things, and I've seen people sort of get themselves in a, in a bit of a state when they see, sometimes you're sewing along and you see it begin to bubble in front of you, you're sewing yes. two seams together, yeah. and you can see that sort of, and mm. you think, oh, this is gonna be longer than that bottom piece. Mm. What, all you need to do then is stop with your needle down and flick it up. A few more stitches, flick it up. And okay. what you're doing effectively is easing that top fa fabric through. You're getting rid of that bubble. Okay, and is that because the sort of the teeth at the bottom will help pull it through? Yeah. So you just do a couple of stitches and then lift the... Yeah, so if I wanted to ease it now, I would stop, flick it up, and I would do okay. a couple more. Oh, well, that's interesting. Stop, I like that one. Flick it up. And you will find that bubble that you were looking at will gradually dissipate. Just a little bit at a yeah, time. time. Saves doing that, stretching it like that. Effectively, like what you're doing is creating almost a walking foot. Yeah, I guess yeah. so. Yeah. Yeah, because you're lifting up. Yeah, that's yeah. true. Because that's what a walking foot does. A walking foot ensures that both pieces of fabric mm. go through exactly the same speed. But on an ordinary sewing machine without a dual feed, that bottom one's con consistently Because a lot of people use quicker. their walking foot all the time, don't they? Yeah. For every, every sewing. I don't, I use mine just for quilting. But only because it's a bit big, the foot's a bit bigger. And with my normal foot, I can see more. Yeah. So with the walking foot, it's a bit bigger. But I do like, it's nice for quilting. There you go. So there's a couple together. Yeah, so actually, so you can have the same colours touching, that's fine. Yeah, you begin to create like a secondary design, don't yeah, you? Yeah, you do. So maybe it is worth colouring it in. So you could photocopy that, couldn't you, on the back? Because it might be worth colouring yeah. it in to decide before you do it. But that's so simple. And now, I guess this is where you can now do the decorative stitching. Oh, yeah. Yep. Get your decorative stitches out, like a, some sort of herringbone or a flower yeah. stitch, especially across the diagonals. Or just a zigzag. And also you can use different threads, different weight threads. That's true. Yeah, so so what weight would you use on that? So I would go down perhaps to a 30 okay. weight. Okay, quite a yeah, thick one. Quite a thicker one to sort of make it stand a little bit proud of the surface. Or metallics. Metallics. That would be nice, wouldn't it? A yeah. shiny thread, but you could use up all those old well, scraps if you're, Especially well. if you're doing something Christmassy, you could do sort mm. of reds and greens and metallics. That's beautiful. Yeah. Make a really nice, like a floor cushion, wouldn't it? Or I'm sure that machines also have, sorry, I can't, maybe I got over it. It's all right. <laughs> Carry on. Carry on. I'm sure they have like, um, like a snowflake, don't they? There's like a snowflake. Yeah, there's all different sorts. Yeah. yeah. Loads of different ones. I mean, and, and sometimes you get all these stitches, you think, well, I'm never going to use them, but this is ideal. This is the time. But it does feel very like, sumptuous doesn't it it does yeah and it is nice for using so it's lovely you know if you buy one of the bundles that we sell use that but mm, put some of your own fabrics in yeah. as well because yeah, you could fussy cut with them because that's the oh. great thing about the creative grids because you can see yeah. through them so if you want to fussy cut and you've got a little pattern or motif you can place it on yeah as long as you do it on the right side and then you can see what you're cutting and also, if you use stripes as well, you could create another secondary design. That would be really dynamic. Oh, okay. Oh, what? Yeah. So if you join together fabrics and then cut out the joins. Well, if you just used a stripe fabric that perhaps... Oh, yes, yeah. that's true. And then, then you'd you could get secondary yeah. designs popping up, wouldn't you? So that Riley stripe. Blake um, fabric we just had in that was printed in diagonally. Yes, that one. It would look really unusual, wouldn't yeah. it? Or, like you say, you could join together fabrics and then and then cut them out. Yes, you could. So yeah. much you can do with this. With just three little rulers. Yep. Bargain. <laughs> What's that? Twenty two ninety nine. That's very good, isn't it? 
And remember, that's nearly halfway to your £50 when you get your £10 off as well. OK, well, that's lovely. I'll have to put those to one side. So shall we move on now to the um, 45 degree kaleidoscope triangle ruler? Is that what it's called? No, it's 45 degree double strip kaleidoscope ruler. That's what it's called. So this is a really unusual ruler. You'll have to talk me through this one because it seems to have quite a lot on it. It's got the triangles. It's got the quarter of inch lines printed on, on those triangles. It's got a ruler across the bottom. Yep. I mean, it's got little cutouts. It just looks like a row of beach huts to me. <laughs> beach huts. <laughs> So what, how does this one work? What did you, where did you start? So and how does it work? I started by, um, so I cut myself various strip sets and started playing with it. But you need a four and a half st inch strip set to make it work to cut the, the actual. Okay, so how many strips do you, do you cut? Just two? I cut two strips, <coughs> yeah. So I made 10 of these because you, so there's one, there's two, four, six, eight, ten. Can you see if it's double? Yes, yes. Yeah. Yeah. So then you're cutting triangles yeah. then. Okay. Um, the other parts of the ruler are, this got, obviously it's got a straight edge as well, which you can use. And it's also got a 3.25, I don't know if you can see that on there. So this is a three quarter inch square, which is also included. And if you cut that in half. Oh yeah, now I can see. There, yeah. it goes up there and along there. If you cut it in half, she says, you actually make the corners of the block. Okay. Okay. So how did you find out where was the information? So it comes with because ah. these creative grid things are really good, aren't they? And they've got that that little thing on. What's it called? A scan. You oh, the QR code. Yeah. My son knows how to use that. I've got no idea. You do with your phone. <laughs> do you? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, you so just put your camera over it. I must it scans the QR code. Yeah. And then that takes you straight to the ah, website. Right, okay. Yeah, so it leads you completely through through the process, cutting the strips. Okay, so all the instructions come with it. Yep. But if you want the video, you just scan this, you just put your phone, get it onto put it on the camera setting, put it over that, and then it'll scan it, a bit like you know when you're in the supermarket and you're scanning something, and then it'll take you straight to the website and you can watch the video. Oh, on the Creative Grids website, not on YouTube. Um, well, I don't know, it'll take it straight, it says just say see a demo, so I don't know what it takes oh, okay. you through to, but it'll take you through to their demo, but all you have to do is put the, as if you're about to take a photo, but just place it over that, and once it comes into vision, yeah. it's clear, it'll take you straight to the website. How techy is that? <laughs> <That's right. laughs> and I go home and impress my son now and go, go yeah, oh, no, look what I can do. do. But you have these QR codes for loads of things, don't you? Yeah, I've seen them before, I've always avoided them like a plague. To I am it. not the world's most techy person. And then once it comes into sort of focus takes you off. Mm -hmm. Magic. See, I've learned something this the morning. Magic. <laughs> okay, so okay. the instructions come with it, but if yep. you want a, a video, you can use the QR code. Yes. Okay, so I'm going to use this, a spinning mat. I found it much, much easier to cut it on a spinning mat than to actually try and cut it sideways. Okay. I'll show you now. So, so we do sew rotating cutting mats like the one Sally's using. Look at that. The bottom stays still and the top goes round. I love a rotating. It's Brilliant so for this, safe. but um, for foundation paper piecing, it's yep. really, really yep. useful. But it just, for, obviously not for massive pieces, but for something small like this, it means that you don't have to move anything. You don't have to disturb anything. But um, if you go onto the website, you can find them there. Okay. So I'm just going to cut some out. So you want to cut down, so I've got it on the bottom of it on the four and a half inch line. Can you see I've got it lined up yes, perfectly yeah. with that top edge? Yeah. So then I'm just going to cut down into the into the hole. So is that little hole cut yeah. out so that you can cut beyond? Yeah, so you can cut right down in there. Because otherwise you wouldn't be able to cut off the corner. No. So. I did wonder what that bit was for. I can't remember how I cut it out now. Right. Line you back up. So this is basically just cutting triangles. Yep. Brilliant for small bunting then. Oh yeah, I haven't thought of Did that. It? Small bunting, not massive bunting. There we go. 
Christmas yeah. bunting, because you only want little bunting to hang around your kitchen. That's so. A, so it's a very fabric efficient way of cutting triangles. Yes. So here are the pieces. So they're going to go together like this. Okay. The one thing that they don't mention in there, which I, I did on the second one that I made, not on the first one, is I actually put like a pivot point in. So I drew, I drew in quarter an inch. Oh, I guess where you can, they've got the seam allowance marked yeah. on the ruler. So it's just where that, that point is. Point is, yeah. Because so where that point is, where the two match, that's your pivot point. And did you put that on all of them or just the top? I put that on all of them on the, the second time. On all time. points? Yes. So the pivot point is, is basically the quarter of an inch seam allowance on the inside of all of them. Yeah. So just sew these together. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to sew down to the pivot point and right. then do a couple of back stitches. Okay. And like we said in the previous show, that stops you getting this huge lump in the middle. Yeah, so yeah. rather than sewing right to the end, yeah. you sew to the pivot point, yeah. which is basically to the edge of the seam allowance. Yeah. It's a bit like when you join um, a gusset to a bag and you don't sew all the way down, when you're joining um, yes. like a base to a bag. If you don't sew all the way down to the seams on the sides, but stop at that pivot point, it's easier to join the bottom in. So that makes sense. Because there's so much going on in this ruler, isn't it? You just think, oh, that's just a small ruler. But actually, when you look at it, there's quite. They've really thought this through. They put as many different things in it as they can, and by putting the non-slip strips around the edge of the triangles as well as on the bottom of the ruler, it yeah. must help to cut them out. Yes, uh, the, the non-slip thing is is well, it's synonymous, isn't it, with creative yeah? But they put there. it around the outsides of the, just the triangles as well as along the bottom of the ruler, which I think is a great idea. So I'm just using like a, a sew line pencil. You could use a, a Frickson pen. And you can see how quickly it begins to, to come together. It's always going to do that extra stitch, isn't it? You think you've got to the end, but no. Okay. So with these, we press them all in the same direction. Okay, so towards the dark side. Yeah. So I've joined two in a w the opposite way around that I wanted to. I wanted to do red, white, red, white. Let's ignore that one for the moment and do another one. So I'm going to guess where the, the pivot point will be on this one. So if we draw it again. So how many triangles go in the kaleidoscope? Eight. Eight. Right. And then you just sew them together in opposite colours. Yeah. But press okay. them all to the same side. Yes. Okay. So I'm going to press towards, I'm just going to finger press that towards the darker one and that one. And then you can see how they're beginning to come together. So when you get down to here, you want to make sure that you don't catch in those yeah, seams. I see what you mean. So is yeah. that why you sew them in pairs and yes. then pairs into fours? Yeah. And that's how you get it to lie flat in the centre. Yeah, we'll have a look at this one when it comes out and you can see how it's beginning to lie then. <laughs> I knew it would do that. So I, I pressed the reverse mine. When button I press and it the, um, comes forward once. When I press the cut button, it always comes forward <sighs> once and cuts you think, no, no, no. Don't but it's all it. like in action then. <laughs> right. So you can begin to see how. Hey. Oh, you need to move yeah. your head out, Sally. There you go. There you go. Brilliant. Right. And again. 
Brilliant. Okay. So you want to press them yeah. all in the same direction, okay. regardless of their colour. So it would have been nice if we could have pressed them all to the red, but we're not going to get But it just doesn't work like that. No. So you have to press them all in the same direction. Yeah, so that okay, they go all the way around. Okay, now I can see that now. So why do you do that? To so keep it nice and flat. Okay. Yeah, so, so you do what you do in quarters. So join it in pairs to make quarters. Then you put them in halves, and then you join the two halves together. Yeah. So do you want me to continue with this, or do you want me to have a look at? Let's we have a look at the other block. Yeah, let's yeah. have a look at the other block. So it's so quite straightforward. Yeah. And we've got half there. We just complete so the other half. So you've got the other block finished. Yes. So you would complete the other half. And then putting the two pieces together, mm. what I would recommend is that you sew from the middle to the outside edge. Oh, and okay. from the middle to the outside edge. So not edge. all the way across? No. Right. You will get it to sit much better if you do that. Okay. And if you put a pin, you know, either end to make it. That's a good tip. Yeah, and your baggy bottom. And baggy bottom. <laughs> Remember baggy bottom. Okay, so that's... It's a bit like soggy bottom, only more positive. <laughs> so that's one colour, just the red and the white. So this one is actually made up of strips. So you make a strip set. Okay. So, so what do you mean by strip set? So you've I've got a two and a half, two two and a half inch strips, which I've joined together. So what, you cut them across like the width of the fabric? Yes. And then you sew them together? Yes. Let's make sure they are two and a half. They are, aren't they? Am I going crazy? No, they're both two and a half inch to make your four and a half that you need. Yes. Yeah? Yes. To make the triangle because that's four and a half inches. Yeah. So you would just join those two all the way down the edge, press towards the darker one, and then you're able to put your ruler on. And then exactly the same as I did before, cut your triangles out. Okay. Yeah. And then once you've cut so the So you've done it exactly the same exactly way. Exactly the, the same way. way yeah. Okay. And then you've got cut triangles where red's at the top, white's at the top, red, white, which is the same as here. So yeah. this is those triangles put together. Oh, I see, because when you cut it, because you're cutting one triangle one way and one the other way, yeah. that swaps the red and the white over. Yeah. Right, that makes sense now. I was thinking, why are they swapped over? But it's because the spaces in the triangles cut other triangles. Yes, yeah. that makes sense. It does look like a like you have on a gingerbread house. What are those sweets called? Where like peppermint? Yeah. Yeah, red. In the States, they used to call them lifesavers. That's when well, they're on sticks, aren't they? They're yeah. like peppermint swirls or yes, something. Yeah, that's exactly yeah. what it looks like. It's lovely though, isn't it? So it's important really that you use two contrasting colours. Yes, so, so, so that you get the, that effect. One thing I would say that I found about using the ruler is I did start off using the ruler like this. Mm. Yeah, and it really didn't work. Although I felt like I was hard up against this, it felt wrong. And then when I actually put the triangles against each other, um, some of the triangles were not the same size as others. Right. So it's best to do them so all So I would definitely way. recommend that you do it away from you, turn it yeah, and do it and the then other do way. Yeah, do the other way, yeah. yeah. Okay. Or just go around the other side of your table. I do that sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if you can walk round your table. I walk round well. the other side of the table. If, I, if it's something really big and I can't rotate it, because if it's on a big cutting mat, I just walk round the other side of the table. Well, that sounds logical. See, I've got a window ledge, so I can't do that. No, that's <laughs> no use at all, is it? No, luckily I can stand on the side. But yeah, see, I, and sometimes I'll do that. I was like, oh, I'll cut that way because I can't be bothered to move around. And it's never as good, no, is it? No, Okay, So this... It really does only work cutting one way. This one... Mm -hmm. is again a strip set and this is three strips oh, okay okay so, so how wide are those so these strips are two and a half one and a half and one and a half oh okay so, so they're difference. joined again along the long edges to create a complete strip set mm. so let's put these together how they would be so they would sit something like this and then you would put your ruler on there and again cut them through. Yeah, nice. Exactly the same way. And then to make the corners, I touched on this at the beginning, you can use the 3.25 markings, the three and a quarter inch markings square mm. of the ruler to cut a square, cut it through, and then And all of those instructions are in the booklet yeah. that comes with it. So, and then you just put them on the on your 
lot. Okay. And then you just just, just make lots of them. Just join them all them. together. Yeah. So that's those. So there's a lot you can do with this ruler. Just take all that over there. And then I got super excited about the trees. Okay. I must admit it was like, a, oh my god, <gasps> I can make trees. You can make trees, of course, because <laughs> they're triangles. So. Having learned that I could make a strip set and then subcut it into triangles, mm. I made a strip set using scraps that I got, just lots and lots and lots of scraps. Like these, about an inch, an inch and a half. All random scraps. So it doesn't really matter. No. It can just be whatever width you like. Yep. And you sew them all together. And I sewed them all together into a strip set. Which oh, was but yours aren't all straight. No, they're not even straight. No, so just any random strip. Yep. Okay. And then as I long as they're as more long than as they're four and, a half. four and a half. So they're gonna have to be bang on four and a half to actually cut them. The but you could out. trim it down, couldn't you? You could make it bigger. Oh I did. I, oh, made, okay. I made it bigger and it was all wonky and all over the place. Right. And then I grabbed hold of it and straightened it up. Straight completely. It all, so it's all exactly four and a half inches. Yeah, because I I didn't really want it to be uniform. No. I want wanted it to look random. Yeah, no, yeah. I like that. So I, so I guess you, yeah, so you have to make a bigger piece to do that, really, don't you, to be able to cut it down? Yeah. Okay. So, and then use the template and cut your trees out. And here is a tree. So th these are the sort of trees that I was cutting out, which match those ones. And then you just cut corresponding triangles out of your background fabric and pop them either side so that you oh, make course, a so row you, yeah, so you can use instead of making triangles. a round block you're mm. making a line yeah yeah so shall i sew that one in and so yeah. you just see what one tree looks like so this is a quarter inch seam one thing i would say about that though is do be careful and perhaps start your fabric because if you're going to use lots of random strips a lot of them are going to end up on the bias of course. Okay, you yes, don't yeah. really want your trees to go all super bendy mm. at this point. So if they've got a bit of starch in them, a best press is fine. You know. Oh, okay. Yeah. And you do that, and you do that before you before cut you, them out. Before you so cut once them you've out. joined all the bits together and cut it to four and a half inch wide, yeah. then you starch them. Yeah. And that just stabilises the bias. Yes, that stabilises okay. that little bias edge then. I know, because I know a lot of people say, you know, we do all these lovely products, and they go, what, what's the point of that? What do we use that for? So do you use Best Press quite a lot? Yes. And yeah. when do you, other than the... I use it, it a lot. Is it just for stabilising the bias? No, I just use it gen generally. Okay. Yeah, I'm, or I use like a, what I would call a heavy starch. Right. And, like what's, and why? What do you use it for? A heavy starch mm. to stop fabrics warping. Okay. Particularly um, ones that are a loose weave, mm. you know, that are not a very high thread count. They're more likely to warp, so give it a little bit of substance. Okay. So like if you were using like a cotton lawn or something yes. like that, you would start your yeah, first. Yeah, that's the, the Liberty Tana lawn. Yeah. yeah. Do you then sort of wash it afterwards to get rid of it? Or just... Um, no, not really. No. <laughs> it doesn't make too much difference. That, that's one of those questions that everybody asks, isn't it? Are you a washer or a non-washer when it comes to quilting? And I'm afraid I'm a non-washer and I've never had a fabric bleed on me yet. No, I don't pre-wash and the only reason I don't pre-wash is I'm too impatient. <laughs> <laughs> I'm too impatient. Well, that, that sounds like me as well. But also, admit. no, that's not the only reason. I don't like cutting pre-wash fabric because when you buy it, it's very crisp. Yeah, exactly. It's and got it's that sizing nice. in it. Yeah. But you put that in the washing machine and then get it out and then you hang it on the line or on the radiator or something. It's all seen, it's a bit creased. It takes ages to press it anyway. And it's not as crisp. It's just not the same. It's not as nice to cut and sew with. And I know you're supposed to. <laughs> But it's, it is harder to sew with. Yeah, it is, definitely. You and it sort of goes off. The grain, I don't know what happens to it. It's, sort of, it's not quite as straight as it was. No. Um, in the States, they're very big on um, putting starch, or sizing, they call mm. it, in their fabrics. And there's one particular American store, and she will you buy all her fabric for a quilt, and then she will heavy starch it. In other words, plunge it in water full of starch, and then dry the pieces before she ever puts them into a, into a quilt. Wow. Yeah. There were pictures of her bathroom and covered is that in that just, so just to make it easier to cut? To make it easier, yeah. Okay. I guess it washes out though. Once you finish yeah. the quilt, you could put it in the wash, couldn't you? 
Um, unfortunately, I didn't bring any trunks. Oh, so how do we, how do <laughs> we make a trunk? Then? Okay, so the, if you the dimensions are for a trunk, I cut pieces of brown that were two by one and a quarter. For the pieces in between, I'm calling them spacers. I cut them two by three, so that's a two. Okay, by so three. you could work that out, yeah. couldn't you, by? And then the little ones at the end, which is what I'm calling half a space, there was, those are two mm. inches high by one and seven inches. So it'd make wide. a nice table runner, wouldn't it? It would. It would make a great table runner. You could have something, perhaps you could, actually, you could just have some a plain middle, and then you could have all the trees running mm. around the outside yeah. edge. The other thing that you could do, going back to the blocks here, I didn't do this, but worked out this morning, is you you could use the trees and have like a tree, 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 mm. and perhaps some sort of centre, and use it as a placemat. Yeah, that would be nice, wouldn't yeah, it? Yeah, square. Or a candle mat. Oh, yes, yeah. They're really in at the moment, aren't they? Yeah. Well, I guess it's better than using a coaster. <laughs> it's nice to have a candle mat. But there's lots of things. So this ruler, I mean, it, you know, it looks like something really simple, but it actually does quite a lot, doesn't it? Yes. The fact that you've got a straight ruler that you want, if you want to use it, and the triangles, and all the instructions. Yep. All looks pretty good. Mm. I also put in a, a header as well at the top. So we've got someone who's asked a question, can you use scissors? Ooh. Well, I guess you could in that you could draw the lines and then cut with scissors. Yeah. But that's not really the point of it. I mean, they are designed to use with a rotary cutter. I guess if you wanted to use the triangle shapes to mark triangles onto fabric, you could draw along it and then you could cut along it with scissors. You could do. But really the whole point of it is that you use it with a rotary cutter because that's what it's for. But if you want to cut out perfect a perfect shaped triangle, then it is there, so you could do, but you'd have to draw the line first. You, and we've got a message from Sue, and Sue, Sue says, this is a fantastic ruler. Got this one, and it's so easy to use. Well, there you go then. Wow. Mm. It is. I th I'm really impressed by such a little thing, how many How many things different things you can make. Yeah. And it's quite nice as well that, you've, that actually you've got just a, a straight 12-inch ruler. Yes, well. yes. Jan, morning girls, Sally, morning. first time since Sewing Quarter, I've been able to catch you live. Oh, hi. Big wave. <laughs> oh, Jan, oh, yes, big wave. <laughs> big wave. <laughs> first time since Sewing Quarter, well, I know. It's nice Gosh, to have everybody back, That makes back, me feel ancient. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I've been doing this years yeah, now. <laughs> this is only, it's only a year ago. <laughs> it's nice to have everybody um, well, thanks so much, Sally. You've really, um, it's really nice to see how all the different things you can do. Because yeah. I think often you see one of these rulers and you either think, I'm not sure what to do with that, or you only think of one thing to do with it. Yeah. So it's lovely to see what amazing value it is. All the, and I love the trees. Yeah, I love the trees. Ideas. I'm very tempted to go home and make just trees. Lots of trees. Yeah. <laughs> um, so when are you back with us? I'm back now. What's the date today? Is I'm back on the 30th. November. Okay, so yeah. we'll see you then. Yeah. Well, thank you ever so much. Thank you. And we'll see you soon. So... We're just going to do a recap of the 45 degree double strip kaleidoscope ruler. So remember, you can make triangles with it. You can just cut triangles, you can make trees, but you can do it as a whole kaleidoscope. So there's a lovely ways of joining together strips of fabric to turn them into kaleidoscope blocks, which you can then join together to make whole quilts. Remember that inside the ruler in here, this is the instruction booklet, but there's also the QR code that you can scan so you can go straight to their website and watch a YouTube vid a video so you can see how to use it. This, you know, it looks like just a little thing, but there is so much value in it. And as with all Creative Grids rulers, it has the textured part behind it, which goes all around the triangles and then little dots around the back of the ruler that just stops it slipping which anyone who uses rulers knows the importance of when you're holding something, you've got your rotary cutter and it suddenly slips off, you've, you've lost your piece. So they, they are fantastic value for money because there is so much you can do with them. Um, and these are the items that you can make with them. So you've got on the right, that's the, the double, the two colour kaleidoscope. The one in the middle is the triple colour and then you've got the trees. <coughs> and then you can see how you can actually join them all together to make a quilt so they look lovely don't they and you can just keep repeating it and that's what happens if you repeat more and more and more of them it really does become like a Clyde's go and there's your there's your Christmas quilt Christmas wall hanging that's just lovely isn't it 
That's what I'm doing exactly. You could put um, stars in the sky if you did like a yeah. navy background, couldn't you? You could, and you could, you could also sew little um, like star buttons on them. Yeah, you? it's just really yeah. lovely, and that's all you know, and that's just one of the things you can you can make with it. So that's lovely. We've also got the um, the scrap crazy ruler, and in the scrap crazy ruler, you basically you make an eight inch block, and there's three. Um, different rulers that come in here a and b c and d and there's an instruction booklet that tells you exactly what you can do with it and again it has the um, qr code to see a demo and all the instructions that you need of how to create the scrap crazy quilt so you can use it to just create blocks it will make an eight inch block or you can join all the blocks together to make anything patchwork um, quilt wall hanging you could use it to make um, a big floor cushion or a smaller cushion. You could go for the whole Victorian feel of crazy quilts, crazy scrap quilts, where they um, join together all the squares. You use quite, you know, scraps of luxurious fabrics, join them together, embellish them with all those embroidery stitches you have on your machine and never know what to do with. So that's a great, great little tool, twenty two ninety nine. And don't forget, today we have our special deal to celebrate the fact that we have. 10,000 fans on our Sewing Street fan page. We are giving everybody £10 off when you spend £50 or more. Now, just the complexities of the system, they that £50 worth has got to be in your basket and you have to check out all in one go. It can be more than £50. But if you use the code Facebook10, then you'll get £10 off. But even better than that, if you spend £80 or more, you get £20 off and you use Facebook 20 for that. And again, in exactly the same way, you must have that £80 worth in your basket and check out all at the same time for it to work. So, for example, the Riley Blake bundle that we did earlier that was £95.49. Gosh, I couldn't remember that. £95.49 pence for 12 half metres of the Riley, new Riley Blake collection, which is six metres in total, that automatically applies to the 20% off bundle. No, 20 pounds off, not 20 pounds. Blah, get confused. So that automatically applies to the 20 pounds off when you spend 80 pounds or more. So if you bought that and you put Facebook 20 in the, as the code, you will then be buying it for 75 pounds and 49 pence which normally the Riley Blake fabric is 7.99 for half a meter that brings it in at just over 6 pounds so for a brand new fabric that's really good value which is why we have created bundles like that although it's a bit silly since it was a brand new fabric but there we go sorry that that was the offer today that was the offer today so that's great i mean it really is worth using put put the idea you know anything that you've seen this morning put them in your basket, put them in there until they reach the 50 pounds or the 80 pounds and then check out all at once. So we, should we go back? We've got lots of fabric bundles for you, but the one that sally Ann used to make the scrap crazy quilt is, um, oh, I've put all of those in together now. <laughs> That's gonna really confuse them, sorry. So there's only a few left of these. This is really popular and I think it's because everybody loves the rainbow colours. So in here you've got four half metres of red, orange, yellow, green and blue. But what's lovely about them is they're not just plain fabrics. I'll show you the um, blue one because that shows up really well. They've got all these lovely spots all over them but in different colours. So the blue one has got blue and white and black spots. The green one's got green spots. Funny enough the yellow one's got yellow spots and the orange has got orange and white and the red is white. But there are currently more in baskets than we have available. So if you want it, please do check out, but make sure you've got over your 50 pounds so you can get your special, special discount of today. Now, the other one that we saw that sally Ann was using to make the kaleidoscope with, you know, there were some members that she used using two fabrics, some using three fabrics, is this bundle here. So you've got four half metres of fabric. You've got the red, which is a really lovely tomato red, but it's got a mottled pattern on it. So it, f it feels like it has texture. It's not just your plain fabric. And then exactly the same fabric, it has the mottled texture, is the ivory. And that has a white texture on top of it. And then this one is like a beigey colour with a deep beige 
a milky latte and this one is a deep ivory with a with a bit of sprinkle of, of browny pinky beigey color so that's a cappuccino that's a latte that's milk chocolate no, that's a white chocolate hot chocolate and that one is a tomato doesn't really go yeah that's a bloody mary <laughs> which sort of goes with coffee doesn't it yeah but more morning morning drinks yes so but it is a lovely it's it's not red and white it's red and white but a little bit with a little bit more texture a bit more choice and that's why we put these bundles together for you because it's easier for us we're here we can see the fabric we also have a lot of people in the office who are incredibly creative and understand colour and how it works and they put these bundles together to show you how it all works and then you then don't have to don't have to think about it because we've done all the hard work so and then my last bundle that I really like this is the rainbow bundle. So we've got blue rainbows, we've got pink rainbows, and that's half a metre, and then just half a metre of cream. So they're just really nice. Do you know, wouldn't they make wonderful face masks? Lovely. It's so a half a metre of each because you could use the cream for the lining because you know you have to have the two layers, and you could use the pink rainbow and the blue rainbow, but they're really fun, aren't they? So if you're doing any kind of children's makes, but that with the um, kaleidoscope ruler, because when you cut them, you could cut them in different directions. It suddenly makes the rainbows move around and jump. It'd be really interesting, but the cream up against it works really well. But I love those two fabrics. Aren't they great? But you know, little bags for kids, perfect. So, and then finally, I'm just going to recap. The early bird feels, doesn't feel that long ago since eight o'clock. Don't know when the time's gone. Right, yeah, who took it out of the bag? Actually, do you know what? I wasn't going to take it out of the bag. Hannah said, oh, take it out of the bag. And um, did you all hear Hannah say she would put it back in the bag later? <laughs> yeah, everybody witnessed that? Because yeah, I am definitely not going to try and get this. So for 26 99 this is three metres square, which in um, old money is 120 inches square. It's a really good quality polyester wadding. So there is loads, there's absolutely loads. I'm thinking, you know, you want to make a snow scene. You could make a massive snow scene with this, but it's enormous. So this is perfect if you want to make, I think, is it king size? A king size quilt. Obviously, it will fit that, but obviously it's really useful. Yeah, it looks like Winter Wonderland on screen. But it's also really useful if you want to have a stash of wadding to put in your um, bags, clothing, cushions, Christmas stockings, advent calendars, Christmas tree um, skirts, perfect for that. But if you want to have a big stash that you can use time and time and again, because otherwise you think, oh, I'll quilt that, oh, I haven't got any wadding, oh, the shops aren't open for another week, can't bother to order it. Something as this big will last for a very long time. 26 99 so that's three pounds off, and it really is worth adding to your stash. Don't forget, if you spend £10 or more, this is the last time I'm going to say it, if you spend £10 or more, for £50 or more, you get £10 off. I like that. If you spend £10, I got it round the wrong way. If you spend £50 or more, you get £10 off. Right, so we need to talk about what's coming up tomorrow before we go to Yarn Lane. So tomorrow at eight o'clock, fabulous fabrics. It's all about liberty and don't we love liberty fabrics? Mm. Let's hope we're looking at the selvages. Nine o'clock, um, we've got Alison Marion in doing her fidget book cushion. I've seen that and it's really nice. It's so cool, love that. 10 o'clock, sewing room tools. 11 o'clock, Alison Marion's back with the crisscross quilt. And 12 o'clock is gorgeous gifts. But do not go anywhere. Do not go anywhere because we have this week's first episode in season one. <laughs> See, um, see, series one of Yarn Lane and we've got the fabulous Nickena from Twig Knits. We're doing knitting with hand dye yarns. Do not go anywhere. You are going to love this. See you in a minute.